Presented by the United States Army, an army of one. And in part by Russell Athletic. Congratulations to Coach Bill Gallagher from Perry Traditional Academy. The Russell Athletic High School Coach of the Year. Russell Athletic, worn by America's top teams. And we are almost set to go here in San Antonio. The U.S. Army All-American Bowl, east against the west from the Alamo Dome. Game ball was brought in by the repellers from the top, from the 101st Air Assault Repeller. They wanted me to do it, Reese, but I, you know, I just said... <laughs> You to snap so one of the game rules is Trev can't repel. Take a look at some of the rules that we'll be playing under in the All-American Bowl tonight. 12-minute quarters, just like in high school. No blitzes or blocking below the waist. A defense must play a straight 4-3 in the onside kick, only allowed in the fourth quarter by the trailing team. Well, there's no blitzes, but some of the linebackers I talked to said if we get play action pass, we're just going to pretend we got sucked up on the play action and we're hitting the quarterback anyway. Just like a linebacker trying to cheat right <laughs> off the bat. You probably coached those guys to do that. Demario Pleasant, number one on the West. Watch him. He's coming after the quarterback. Head coach of the East is Reggie Lawrence. He was an assistant in this game last year. He leads Jackson Memorial in Jackson, New Jersey. Three Straight state championships, good high school football in the state of New Jersey. Reggie is guiding the East team, and Glenn Hill from Roosevelt High School right here in San Antonio, Texas. Glenn, like Reggie, an assistant in the game last year, and he is leading the West wearing white today. Well, the East needs to step up, Reese. I mean, the West, the last two years, uh, you know, have pretty much dominated this game. Trev, I'm taking the East in this game because they will step up. I know you like the West and the speed of the West, but I like the strength and the power of my guys from the East. The East won the toss. They elected to receive. And David Dykes will be kicking off. This is Demetrius Summers, a highly regarded running back from Lexington, South Carolina. He's deep to receive along with Andre Caldwell. It was Rache Caldwell's little brother. He's not decided whether he will go to Florida just yet. Here is Dykes, a 6'1", 185-pounder out of Houston, Texas. And Toby meets leather, and we are underway. Short kick. Summers is going to take it just inside his own 15, and he is snowed under. It's just down across the 20. Demario Pleasant, linebacker, the first to hit him there and bring him down for the win. Our U.S. Army starting lineup for tonight, the East squad, led by Chris Leak. We will have a microphone on Chris, so we'll be able to take a listen into his huddle of time. 6'2", 210 pounder out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Here are the skill set people. Demetrius Summers, we've already had a look at him, returning the kickoff. Travis Thomas in the backfield with him. Greg Olson, a tight end who is highly regarded in this game. The coaches have been very impressed with him. Four wide receivers, one setback for Chris Lee. Out of the shotgun, a lead comes out firing, and his first pass is complete. Travis Thomas, not much of a game there. Lee comes out firing, guys, immediately, and we might see a quick tempo to this game go, early. Go, go, go. Well, I think you're going to have to look at the East, and they practice the no-huddle offense the entire week, and they want to speed it up. And you look at the lineups here, the offensive line, Reese, and you look at Aaron Sears, 6'4", 305 pounds. Now, that's a pile mover right there. You know what, Mark? He's from Northwest Alabama, and they teach their football players to play very well in Northwest Alabama. The West defensive lineman, the guys that will be going against him, Kyle Caldwell, an outstanding rusher on the end for the West. Second and ten now. They credit no gain. Travis Thomas on that completion in the flat. Chris Leak. And again, we'll go four wide. Three of them going to Leak's left this time. A little pressure up the middle. Leak showing the mobility and firing it out there and just over the outstretched hand of Adarius Bowman. Take away the rest of the starting lineups now. The West. Good set of linebackers on this West squad. Robert Killebrew, a Texas kid playing here. Will Paul is in the middle. And the secondary, we've got some speed burners in the secondary on both teams. Leon Hall, a great story of Leon Hall that we'll detail throughout the night, is on one corner for the West. So Chris Leak now faces a third and ten just a minute into the game in the East. So you know you're going to get man-to-man -man here, Reese. That's part of the rules. Third and fourth down. You have to play man-to-man. On first and second down, you can't play a three-deep zone, but in an effort to give the offense a chance. And Leak is going up top, and he's going deep, and he's got a man out there. Andre Caldwell is gone. Chris Leak to Andre Caldwell, 78 yards for the touchdown, and Leak, who threw a national high school record, 185 touchdowns, gets it off to a great start, Mark. And bang, just like that, Chris Leak, we talked about him in the open.
from the command that he has in the pocket. Beautiful touch on this ball. He's got to air it out over the top, but nice protection by the offensive line. But there you see the speed on the east. They've got speed at every skill position, but the impression of Chris Leak in my mind right off the bat is the touch on the football. Great touch. Sat there in the pocket. Knew where to go with the football. He beat Terrell Brown, number 11, on the west. A fantastic player. Matter of fact, Glenn Hill told me during the week that he was one of the most impressive guys in terms of straight man-to-man -man coverage. Terrell Brown gives up one. He'll try to get it back. Here is Garrett Rivas, who is committed to the University of Michigan. Pops that extra point through. It's a 7-0 lead. A little three-play, 78-yard drive, and all 78 of the yards came on the big play from Leak to Caldwell. Well, it's a deep slant pattern, and what happens is it all starts with the protection up front, Trev. They get wonderful protection right off the bat, the offensive line, allowing Chris Leak to step up. But on the outside watch, he's going to come right down here, and it's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's what? just speed. It's 4-3 speed in a 40, just burns the defender. Well, he gets Brown turned around, and, you know, I mean, that's the thing. you got to either get a jam up front. You see it here, sitting back in the pocket. As you mentioned, the good protection. Easy place to throw. Nobody in the middle of his face. Easy pass to Caldwell. But, but what was cool was the concentration on this catch. Now, he could have easily dropped this catch. It was just a tad under throw, but look at this. Tips, hits his chest, but still, look at the great hands on Andre Caldwell. And watch at the end of this play. This is celebration. I love it. <laughs> well, I better stop that before he gets to college. <laughs> that's right. They'll give him 15 Whoa. for this. Right oh, oh, that's, uh, that's a layup. That's a layup. Yeah. That's that's right. a layup's as good as a dunk. 6'2", 180-pound speed burner. Runs a 4 3 five. He's got his college choices. He says narrow down to... Florida, Florida State, LSU, Miami. I wonder if, wonder if Rache is putting a little heat on to go down and help Ron Zook and be a Gator. Oh, absolutely. You know that's got to happen. You got to pick up the phone and say, "This is what happened when I was here. You're going to enjoy this. This is what you will like. This is what you won't like. And you're going to enjoy Florida because one, you're going to win there. You're going to go to bowl games. You're going to have a chance to compete for a national championship." And Rex Grossman will not be your quarterback. <laughs> yes, that's true. That is uh, unfortunate. I thought he would come back. Honestly, I thought Rex would come back for another year. I was a little surprised by that decision as well. Rex had a difficult season, certainly showed his toughness. Now the West is going to get an opportunity, and Terrell Brown, who was beaten on the touchdown pass, gets an opportunity to get it back. And Brown had a seam for a moment, gets the return out over the 20. They'll put it down at the 23-yard line. West takes over with the U.S. Army starting lineups. Kyle Wright, 6'4", 200-pounder, headed to Miami through 37 touchdown passes in just 13 games this year. Over 60% of his passes were complete. John Carlson, the West has a couple of outstanding tight ends. We'll see how they utilize them. Lima Swede Jr., another big, tall, fast receiver who plans to go to the University of Texas. And we say that tonight, just for the record. It's only a verbal commitment. They can't sign until February. Kyle Wright tries to get it back immediately, and Lima Swede Jr. can't pull it down. Dante Whitner was beaten. Well, apparently what we're going to see here, Reese, is a lot of man-to-man -man defense. We're going to let our quarterbacks just go up top every play. Let's go over our U.S. Army starting lineups and West offensive line, Jory Adams. We saw Jory Adams at lunch today. He does not look like a prototypical offensive lineman. He, he still has a lot of room to grow. He's a big, tall, long kid. Victor Abermary out of Randallstown, Maryland, has a couple of brothers playing for the turf. He leads that East defensive line. Second and ten now after the near miss. And Kyle Wright going right back to the well, throwing it down the same side. And Whitney Lewis cannot haul it in. Dante Whitner this time with a breakup. A great coverage by Dante Whitner. I talked to him this week. He's headed to Ohio State. Feels very confident. He's got a great chance to play there as a freshman. Look at the East linebackers. Tavares Gooden in the middle. Linebacker out of Florida with great speed. Wesley Jefferson alongside him. We've already seen Whitner being busy early on. The East secondary. Ryan Mundy, another kid who's really impressed the coach. Oh, he can stick with the best of me. Hits like a linebacker and covers like a corner. Third and ten now. Right handing the ball off to Reggie Bush. And Reggie Bush is loose. Reggie Bush avoids a couple of tacklers and gets it into East Territory. Reggie Bush down around the 40 before Prescott Burgess pulls him down 37 yards on the run. Uh, you talk about speed and quickness and vision and hitting the hole at full speed. That's exactly what Reggie Bush does. Nice job by the offensive line, creating the seam for him. Here's a good shot by our camera personnel. Look at this. You can see his eyes making the cut. They're following his blockers right there. Move. Make another move. The key to a great back, make a miss, Trev. And he that, just and he, and he told me the one thing that he prides himself in, Mark, is vision. And you can see right there, great vision by Reggie Bush. We've already seen the West going to a tighter formation. Through Tate now in at quarterback for the West. He gives it to Bush, and Bush 
found nothing on the left, right on the right. Tate tries to get a block for him, and Reggie Bush is greeted rather rudely. The East defense arriving with bad intentions. He ran about 40 yards and got one before Wesley Jefferson was there to snuff it out. Take a listen to this as Bush tried to make another big play, guys. <laughs> Did I mention vision? <laughs> <laughs> How about duck? He's got vision. He might be seeing stars right now. <laughs> Time out on the field. The officials stopping things. 9.28 to go in the first quarter. Kyle Wright trying to answer the opening touchdown. Chris Lee threw a touchdown pass in the West. Trying to answer the East. They haven't won this game, but they're up by a touch. Exciting start to the U.S. Army All-American Bowl here in San Antonio. The East has already jumped on top, 7-0. Kyle Wright now back in the quarterback. We have movement up front, and I believe the cadence from Wright caused Sheehan Cotton to jump off sides, and that'll help make it second and short rather than second and long. Did I mention fundamentally sound by Kyle Wright? See? You got to get the cadence too, Reese. We're not very smart on the defensive side. <laughs> hey, Trev, I could never understand you're two feet from the football, and well, the football doesn't move, but you move. Because Kyle's you're shaking his head football. and jumping you're, you're, you're coached to watch the football. Well, well let, let's watch the football. <laughs> Mentioned the West had a couple of good tight ends using both of them in the lineup now. And right, throws ball is tipped and picked off by Ambrose Wooden. Wooden making the play on the deflected ball, and right on his first interception of the night. He didn't throw many during the season. Prescott Burgess coming over and getting a hand on it. Burgess is another guy. I mean, everybody, there are only 78 guys here, and certainly they've all made a great impression on the coaches, but Burgess may be an impact player early. Oh, he's an absolute stud, I, and a guy could play outside linebacker. You see him, he's about 6'3", 215 pounds, hasn't decided where he's going to go, either Ohio State, maybe Michigan. Gets the tip there and a nice pickoff by Wooden. So the East has come up on the short end in the first two years. This U.S. Army All-American Bowl already up 7-0 and now back on the attack with Chris Leak, the quarterback. Just joining us, he threw a 78-yard touchdown pass to Andre Caldwell. Get the Eastern All-Stars off to a great start. This time inside handoff, Daryl Blackman. End of the game, Lewis Baker making the stop for the West. Going to call that about a four-yard game, brings up the second and six. Trev, you know, talking to both of these coaches about this game, they had two different philosophies. The East was out there, they hit right off the bat, yeah. and they had a couple of two days where they had the pads on. And you look at the West, and they had kind of a finesse type week where they didn't hit anybody, they didn't wear the pads. Well, it's an all-star game, Mark. I mean, we have to remember that. But I like, I absolutely like what they're doing with Chris Leak, Leak right now. He's six foot one. Sit him in the shotgun. Get the wide open spread offense there. Let him find guys in man-to-man -man coverage. Show off his arm. Worked so well once. Leak wanted to try it again, but Tony Cade was all over Darius Bowman. Let's go down to Rob Stone now. We're waiting on the Chris Leak announcement, but we might have another commitment, Rob. Yeah, we're all about announcements today. We're going to actually have two more in the first half. We begin with Reggie Bush from California. And Reggie, have you made your decision where you want to spend your next four or five years? Uh, yes, I have. All right, give it to me, buddy. Well, I mean, after uh, a lot of talking with my parents and my cousin JC, we all consulted that this would be the best decision for me, and we decided that it would be... University of Southern California. Congratulations. Why the decision to stay in California and be with Pete Carroll and the Trojans? Well, we felt like it was close to home. Uh, I'm a big track guy, so, you know, obviously I want to run track. And uh, they got a great program. They only have one returning running back. And best of all, I get to keep my number. <laughs> Something about tailback you. Congratulations. Enjoy your stay in Southern Cal. Thank you. Rob, thank you very much. Reggie Bush going to USC. They, of course, have some uh, veteran tailbacks. They have Justin Fargus, who will be going. Sultan McCullough's out of there, too. Of course, Herschel Dennis, a highly touted running back, is there and ready to take over. But you need more than one. Reggie Bush will certainly have an opportunity. Leak just converted another third down with guys just yeah. a mature, beautifully thrown ball to Sean Bailey. So now the East just Zeke, shy of the midfield stripe. Zeke, Chris Leak operating the spread offense brilliantly so far. movement on the outside. Chris Dabbs, who was a late addition to the West roster, jumped, got back, or so he thought. Flags flew. The officials consulting them. The snap. 
false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. So Dabbs did indeed get back. Aaron Sears flinched. Kid out of Russellville, Alabama, the former Golden Tiger. This is Reggie Bush. We heard just a few moments ago he's going to spend the next four years at USC. How's he going to fit in with the Trojans? Well, I think Pete Carroll got himself a great running back, you know, and Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator. Here's a guy with great vision. He likes to compare himself to Marshall Falk. He says he's a complete back, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Obviously, Pete Carroll got a great football player. Here's Daryl Blackman, and he gains the corner and gets the ball in the West Territory. And Blackman rips off about nine yards right there before Tony Cade is there to stop him. Blackman, a 6'1", 190-pounder out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania. He's on his way now to play for Chuck Amato at North Carolina State, he says. And you look at Daryl Blackman at North Carolina State. I think he'll fit in fine. They've got a great running back that was a freshman this year in T.A. McClendon, and he'll come in there and compete for probably the backup position as a freshman, maybe even get redshirted. But, you know, he's going to have a great running back to learn from there in T.A. McClendon. And how good would it have been for the Wolfpack this year when T.A. was going through that period of time when he was nicked up by injury? Oh, yeah. Be able to stick another guy in there? You always need more than one back. Yep. Miami finding that out the difficult way. Elite rolling right and just flipping one out of bounds. Bowman was out there, but nowhere close on that one. You can just tell that Chris Lee gets football. I mean, how many times have we seen quarterbacks, even in college football, Reeves, where they roll out there and they take the sack? Don't throw the football away. Don't make a stupid decision. Don't throw in the coverage. Just get rid of the football. Live to play another down. Going to bring up third and four. A talented kid out of Independence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. He won the Ken Hall Trophy. For those of you who might not be familiar, Ken Hall is a great running back in the 50s for the state of Texas. The Sugar Land Express, they call it. It's the equivalent of the high school highs. But he's two for two on third down right now. And Lee threw a dart right down the middle looking for Travis Thomas out of the backfield. And round three on the coverage there. You got to impress the offensive line, not just because I was a former offensive line, but you looked at quarterback Chris <laughs> Lee. No one's around him. These players have been off for at least a month or longer, and it's much easier to be a defender to come up and get to the quarterback, but it's difficult for an offensive lineman to protect if you've been off for a long time. They've only been together for a week. Look at this. Great pocket. Step up, look down the field. No one's in front of you. Chris Lee does that, and that's because the offensive line allowed that to happen. And, Mark, there's very good defensive linemen from the West. Carnell Stewart, Xavier Lawson. And Kennedy. These are two very good interior guys. You're right, that offensive line has done very well for the East. Eric Wilbur in deep punt formation now for the East. He is headed to Florida for well, end over end kick, and the ball winds up on the ground. Reggie Bush is going to pick it up and try to do something in the broken field, but all kinds of guys surrounding him. 30 yard punt, two yard return for Bush, and the East now has the West pinned back inside their own 20 yard line. More postseason football coming your way on the ESPN family of networks Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time over on ESPN. It'll be the East-West Shrine game. The East squad led by Notre Dame's Tyro Willingham. Ken Dorsey, Brad Banks going to play on the same side in that game. The West led by Mike Price, the new Alabama head coach, Carson Palmer, and Jason Gesser will be on the field for that one. Mark and I were out at the Shrine game last year. It's always a lot of fun and a great showcase of talent. Price rolling out there and harassed and pulled down. Just got the ball away. There is a flag on the field. Victor Abumary there be all up in Wright's face. Quarterback pressure. Wright tried to get outside the pocket. We've seen a little bit of that now, guys, with Wright trying to get out on the edge. Let's go to the field for the call. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving at once. And that's the thing that I've noticed about Kyle Wright is all during practice. I mean, very comfortable in the pocket, but also very comfortable. You see this in college football, somebody, they run the zone play and then you boot it out. Throwing on the run in college football because of the speed of defensive backs and defensive ends now is so important. Obviously, Larry Coker is going to like the mobility of his young Kyle Wright. Like the mobility of Victor Abamary, too. 6'5", 240 pounds out there. Johnny DeRocher now in at quarterback. The West rotating quarterback. And there is Abamary one more time. Snowing under Bush. That's a two-yard loss in the second tackle of the game. Already for Abamary. When I talked to Victor Abamary the other day, he told me, no one can block me one-on-one. -on -one. During this game, they're going to have to double-team me. And he wasn't cocky about it. He just said, I'm very confident. I know that I can do this because I've done it in the past. He's 6'5", 240 pounds, but he gets great leverage, and he has great quickness and explosion off the ball. 
Yeah, 12 sacks on the year. Very active and playing against a very good left tackle in Jory Adams. Six foot eight, 270 pounds. He's got two brothers playing at Maryland right now. Whistles again on second and 19. And right now, Trev, I would imagine, based on your problem with Mark Rick, the head coach of Georgia this year, and rotating quarterbacks that you're not happy with, with Glenn Hall. Yeah, Glenn... Glenn's got to make a decision here. Glenn Hill, we, we, I should we, say. He, we've got to start a quarterback here and stick <laughs> with him, Reese. <laughs> oh, it's a brand new year, but sometimes everything's just the same. It's well men on the field. We'll be back in the next. I mean, back in San Antonio, and this is how the game ball arrived. The 101st Air Assault Repel Team, the Screaming Eagles, coming down there and bringing in the game ball. Sergeant Gennaro Camacho doing the honor. Second and 19 play, and West trying to get a little offense going. Picked up just two. Reggie Bush getting the call again for the West. Rob Stone's working the sideline for us, and he's he's found a guy who had a little talent back in his day and still does, Rob. Yeah, Reese, which one of us was not an offensive lineman in the <laughs> NFL, huh? <laughs> Anthony Munoz here, uh, speaking of Trojans here, and uh, a, a lot of USC potential recruits have been talking to you this week as well. What have you been telling them? What have they been asking? Well, you know, just letting them know that, uh, you know, unlike going to Pitt or Nebraska, USC is like, <laughs> up uh, they're going to be a pretty good ball club next year. But uh, it's just uh, exciting to see the talent out here and they hopefully a lot of these guys will go to USC. Johnny DeRoche ran a quarterback for the West. He got stripped. There's a mad scramble there. Brian Madison forced the fumble in that one. Madison's headed to Iowa. Loss of seven on the play and the West offense is having all kinds of trouble getting going. DeRoche in the middle and Madison came in there and Got knocked down, but knocked the ball loose as he went by. It was a tremendous play. Just good instincts by Brian Madison. You know, his dad, Greg, is the defensive line coach, longtime coach, former defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. And I said, Brian, why didn't you go to Notre Dame? He goes, I don't play for my dad. <laughs> Can you imagine how hard your dad would be on you if he was your coach? You know, and the thing is, Notre Dame has done so well in recruiting. It, it, the one guy they don't have, the one guy they don't get is dad's on the staff. <laughs> to fourth and 27 and Cody Freeby is going to try to kick the West out of a world of trouble. He's got a low line drive kick and Summers grabs it for the East. He's headed to the sideline and the East is in great position. The 25 yard line on the West, 39 yards on the punt, 15 on the return. Let's go back down to Rob now with Anthony Moody. So Anthony, we're watching the early stages of this game. What have you seen in the offensive linemen that maybe wasn't there in your days when you were playing? I think the offensive linemen have a big advantage these days. They're, they're taught the technique a lot earlier in their career. I remember I really didn't start getting a lot of the stuff until late in my college career than when I got in the NFL. Now there's videos, there's guys that, you know, come to, to camps and teach them a lot of the stuff that we were doing in the NFL and that they're doing now. So I think that's the main thing is they're technically a lot more sound now at a younger age. All right, we'll come back to you in one second. All right, Rob, the East up 7-0, and Brady Quinn now in a quarterback. Quinn gives the ball to Travis Thomas, and Travis Thomas is inside the 20. He's going to pick up 7 on the play, Rob. Well, we just had Reggie Bush, the running back, announce that he's going to your alma mater, USC. Uh, what do you think about this player and maybe what Pete Carroll has done with the South California program? Well, you know, just watching him as I have briefly in the first quarter, a lot of speed. And that's one of the things that, you know, USC was always known for the, the, the great running back, uh, the tailback. I had the chance to block for Marcus Allen and Charles White, two Heisman Trophy winners. And it's nice to get a guy there with a lot of speed and hopefully he can bring that not only having a quarterback win the Heisman, but now let's go back to the running back win in the Heisman. That's right. Anthony, thanks for your time. Reese, Anthony Munoz, the best ex-NFLer here today. Rob, thank you. Brady Quinn trying to fire this land. A lot of contact there with Sean Bailey and Len Roundtree, but no flag forthcoming, though Bailey, who's the son of Stacy Bailey, the former Falcon wide receiver, he wanted one. He didn't get it. Maybe he should have. Good protection up front. You get your quarterback Quinn stepping up. But look at this. I think that's pretty good coverage. Yeah, it's well, kind of tight. It's just a little tight there, but it's, it's good coverage. At you will not level, always get those calls in college football. You might as well get used to some yes. muggings out there. As we saw against Miami and Ohio State, oh, that phantom gee, call. you're going to start that over. I thought you were ready to run for mayor of Columbus, and you're starting that. Here's Brady Quinn. He says he's on his way to Notre Dame. Quinn standing in there on third down and lofty one up. It's a little bit short. And out 
there on the play, a tremendous play by Anton Campbell. Greg Olson actually had to turn in to a defensive back and bust that thing up. Anton Campbell just about had himself an interception. Well, Anton Campbell, I mean, you got to look at these defensive backs here for the West. I mean, you got 34, Anton Campbell's going to Michigan. You have to look at Leon Hall, number 20, is going to Michigan. I'm, Lloyd Carr is getting himself some fabulous defensive backs. And Ryan Mundy from the East is also going to Michigan. Three defensive backs. If you looked at Michigan defensively this year, they got great pressure on the quarterback. They just couldn't cover people all the time. Michigan's looking like they've got three very good cornerbacks and defensive backs for years to come. And they hope they have a good kicker, too. He's going to get a chance to try to attempt a 36-yard field goal. Garrett Riva, 5'10", 180-pounder out of Tampa, Florida. West is called timeout late in the first quarter. The East trying to add to that 7-0 lead. Don't forget, forget, coming up later on tonight on ESPN2, it'll be College Hoops tonight, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 out on the West Coast. Had a big battle in the SEC today. We're getting ready to start conference play in College Hoops. It always heats up. The intensity rises a little bit. Trev, I know you like the College Hoops. You got a Final Four pick yet? I don't know. Is Iowa in there? I, I, I love Iowa. The Iowa team. Well, Lute Olson was Here's a coach in Iowa when I grew up there. Of course, I know he's at Arizona now. I'm glad. So I pick Arizona. Yeah, thanks for keeping up. Thanks. <laughs> Mark, you keep up a little better. Hey, Pittsburgh's got a good basketball team. Yes, Mark. they do. Absolutely. That's Garrett Rivas attempting the field goal, and he is wide right. They're now calling it a 37-yard field goal attempt. Michigan was had all kinds of trouble kicking field goals this year, and Rivas can't quite nudge it through the right upright. The East holding on to a 7-0 lead late in the first quarter. Especially down for the Army. That it's really tough to nail down an exact number, but they feel like they landed a number of recruits due to the publicity of this game and identified some guys who might have a future. It's a much different, much different situation. Uh, I, I asked if I could drive that tank, Reese. <laughs> they said no. Well, I wouldn't let you drive that either. Good decision. Kyle Wright dumping it out to Steve Smith. And West getting a positive play, 11 yards, and picking up the first down. You guys, I want to go back to Rivas, who just missed the field goal for the East a few moments ago. Uh, headed to Michigan, which had its trouble kicking, place kicking this year, but really that factored into his decision, didn't it, Trev? It, it really did. You know, I talked to him and I said, why, why Michigan? And he said, well, the, the way that the coaching staff and the fans and everybody treated the kickers there at Michigan when they missed, they didn't boo them, the coaches didn't publicly humiliate them. He said, that's why I went to Michigan. I want support from my coaches and fans. Same high school, as I recall, Soviet Baker, fine kicker at Florida State. This is Drew Tate and a quarterback going up top, looking for Smith again. The two couldn't, hick, couldn't hook up on that one. Zibikowski there on the coverage. Tom Zibikowski, 6-foot, 190-pounder out of Arlington Heights, Illinois, potentially, depending on where he goes, potentially a quarterback in college. I, I've enjoyed watching Tom play. I mean, really didn't play a lot of defensive back. Was an option-based quarterback in high school. He told me, if I play quarterback, in the college football, I'm definitely going to Nebraska. But really, position doesn't matter to me. I just want to play football. Former boxer, one of the tougher people you'll see in this game. Mark, I want you to put that down. That's one Nebraska mention so yep. far. One Nebraska, one coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Wright back in the quarterback. First. Reggie Bush coming around, and Bush getting the corner, and Bush showing some speed. The future Southern California Trojan finally driven down by Prescott Burgess and getting 18. And we've seen the big play potential, Mark, from Reggie Bush. And what really impresses me is the burst and the speed of Reggie Bush and the way that they want to utilize him in this offense and they've only been practicing together one week. Pete Carroll has to be very, very pleased with Reggie Bush's decision. Here on the reverse, now watch the speed once he gets to the corner. Here's the tackle trying to get a block. Nice little push down block. A double block by the left tackle, Jory Adams, but it's the explosion of Reggie Bush. Did you see Mo Dampier, though, big number 74? Did you see the hustle? That's what you have to love from defensive line. Bush has five carries for 54 yards. And West finding something that works. Lindale White, 6'2", 230-pounder out of Denver, Colorado. Picking up nine on the play. And you know, Reese, I, 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 running. well, I was down there in the field this week in Lindell. I mean, his one fly is about two of my legs. I mean, it's so easy to make comparisons to players, but if, if there's a Maurice Claret-type runner in this game, it's Lendell White. Power right up the middle. Has the ability to make you miss, but I mean serious power from the running back position. 
Kyle Wright now back into quarterback. The West continues to shuffle quarterback. Second and short. And again, it's going to be White getting the call and bursting on the a good hole on the left side. Picking up seven yards again. Jory Adams, Ryan Harris over there, Mark. And the big guy, Jory Adams, six foot seven, 270. He's going to fill out to be about 315 in the next couple of years. I mean, he's skinny. He keeps eating like he does at that buffet today. He's going to be about 350. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, when they get on this training team program, they get the college and lifting those weights. He's going to just put the muscle on him. You can just see he's going to fill it. But he looks like a lean basketball player. He could probably play tight end. Well, now Drew Tate's back into the game. And, you know, Glenn, I'm going to call down to Glenn. This rotating quarterback <laughs> thing, nobody can get comfortable. Trap, Reeves. trap. It's an all-star game. They're going to rotate the quarterbacks. Well, not every other play. Chris Barrett, fine tight end. On the right side, jumped the snap count a little bit in the west. They have a nice drive moving. They're going to throw it in reverse just a little bit. Prior to snap, false start. On the offense, five-yard penalty. It's outstanding tight ends in this game, and we've watched Dallas Clark at Iowa, Benny Joffrey at Michigan, some of the schools that use their tight end particularly well. Obviously, Kellen Winslow, who's a quarterback, you got go exceptional, exceptional tight end. Good offenses always utilize the tight end, and all those offenses you mentioned happen to have very good offenses. Very yeah. difficult. Defense, now the shotgun, and here's Tate going upstairs, looking for Lima Sweet again. Finish up the point, Trent. Well, I'm just saying, if you have a tight end who has some speed and great hands, it's a very difficult matchup for the defense. You can't cover him man-to-man -man with your linebacker, but if you choose to take your safety out of the run game, try to make him stop the, the tight end, it's just very difficult to match up. Kyle Wright now back into the game. Let's listen in the huddle. Eight pro screen left. Oh, Ready? Clapping. Good strong snap count. Right looked as if he wanted to set up a screen, and he finally found it to Reggie Bush. And Bush didn't find a lot of running room. There's Tavares Good making the stop. Pick up of only two. Nice hustle by the defense of the East. You saw a lot of black jerseys out there hustling to the football, going to the quarterback, Kyle Wright, and then they smelled the screen out, and they just broke down the field to play. And I think a lot of that has to do by their coaching staff. And you look at Reggie Lawrence, their head coach. He's got a couple of assistants. Stan White played in the NFL, played against him. His son played in this game last year. Bob Pelkel, his son plays at Pittsburgh now. He played in this game last year. And watch the hustle on this defense. This is like Stan White, when I played against him in the NFL, ran to the football. That's putting pressure on the quarterback. Then going after the running back and making the tackle downfield for sure. Good in making the stop. He was the beneficiary of some great pressure once again by Victor Abin Mary. This time Drew Tate getting some heat and throwing it up for grabs, and it is picked off. Prescott Burgess making the play. Tate couldn't get enough on that when he was looking for Barrett going on a deep route, and the East has snuffed out another West run. That's one of the most difficult throws to make. You're running to your left, trying to throw across your body. And the one thing, when you get to this kind of level, even though it's not college football, these players have much different speech. So if you're used to a certain type of player in high school, here you see Drew Tate, as he gets pressure and is up the middle, decides to roll left and throw across his body. Maybe in his high school program, the players he played against, Prescott Burgess wouldn't have been able to close. At this level, these guys have more speed. Prescott Burgess, another huge play, choosing between Ohio State and Michigan, a great defensive back. You know what? I needed to get a responsible opposing view. I'll get a pit reference in there. The quarterback pressure coming from Apahano Wea, whose father, Mark, was a wild Samoan in the WWF, one of the tag team guys. And you know who a relative his uncle is? Who's that? Can you smell what I'm cooking? The Rock. Well, you can smell the East cooking as a run by Tim Castile, getting six right up the middle. Castile set all kinds of records in the state of Alabama. Briarwood Christian out of Birmingham. Over 9,000 all-purpose yards. His dad, Jeremiah Castillo, who played in the NFL. Yeah, I played against him in Super Bowl 22, and he talked about his son. He said that, you know, he, he wants him to emulate, you know, another running back that you talked about in Marshall Falk, because in high school, he caught 250 balls out of the back. That's tremendous hands. You want to be in a spread-type offense, it's going to Alabama. Mike Price is a new head coach there. Brody Coyle will have an opportunity to give it to Tim Castillo, and here is Castillo, who makes a fine run, but he puts a football on the ground, and the West has answered the turnover with the next one. Castillo got loose, but then Kyle Caldwell coming up with the loose football and the good hit to strip by the West defense and perhaps creating an opportunity to get some offense going. 
Well, I think Tody Cade was in on that play, number 23. As you see Castile here just get up. At the west. Yeah, it's Tony Cade, number 23. And talking to Glenn Hill, he said one of the most impressive guys was Tony Cade. He's a safety. He's going to Oklahoma. He said once he gets his hands on you, the play is over. And I know Mike Stoops and Brett Venables got to be really excited to get a guy like Tony Cade. A guy, you know, typically in their defense, they want hitters. And there's Kyle Caldwell, defensive end. Guy who had 20 sacks in high school. For the west. On the ground, getting nothing on the left side. Wendell White getting the call again. Caldwell, a guy with a lot of speed for his size. Caldwell making the play to give the West an opportunity, but right now, got a chance. Second and ten play coming up when we open the second quarter. Andre Caldwell got the East on top. It's 7-0 after Start of the second quarter, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl here at the Alamo Dome. San Antonio, Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, Mark Maywaving, Rob Stones working the sideline, getting all kinds of verbal commitments from these 78 high school All-Stars who come together here to play the premier postseason high school football game in the nation. West threatening after a turnover by the East, deep in his own end. Johnny DeRosier in a quarterback. Johnny's headed to Oregon from the state of Washington. I'll bet that went over well at home. And DeRosier firing to the outside and way over the head of Lima Sweet. Our ESPN2 game track. The West getting it done on the ground with Reggie Bush. Five carries, 54 yards, and one commitment to the Southern California Trojans. Reggie Bush making Pete Carroll a happy man. And the East defense, Victor Abbey Mary, has spent a lot of time in the West backfield getting to know Kyle Wright. Putting the pressure on there in the West after getting the ball handed to them in scoring position is now sitting there looking hurt. At a third down play, trying to keep this alive. White back in there, quarterback now, and more pressure coming, this time for Brian Madison. Madison has already forced a fumble tonight, again caused the ball to be put on the ground. Well, Brian Madison is just doing it with speed, and as a defensive end, that's the thing you have to start with. You have to beat the offensive tackle to the point, and so far, they're not stopping Brian Madison. Here he is up top. See the tight end, number nine there, Chris Barrett. Nice move by Madison. Just throws him down there, gets on the quarterback, forces the fumble. I'll tell you what, Kirk Ferentz has a very fine defensive end in Brian Madison. I think Tyrell Willingham, if he's watching this game, thought about maybe firing uh, Madison. Uh, Greg, uh, can you get him to transfer? <laughs> he's probably on the cell phone right about now. 42-yard field goal attempt now from David Dykes. Dykes putting it up on the way, and it's good. Two yards, that ought to help the recruiting calls come in for David Dykes. Talking to him before the game, and he was just thrilled to be part of this thing. This is team on the board with a 42 yard. The thing you're seeing though too, Reese, is you've seen all these games in college football, Michigan. There's been a number of teams, Florida, all the teams that had special teams troubles, teams that did job, bad job kicking. All of a sudden, a lot of times programs hope that they could get guys to simply walk on. Kickers, obviously, very important, and I think David Dykes is going to find himself with a nice scholarship offer. So the West gets the field goal. He's still up by a count of 7-3. to three. Rob Stone's working on those commitments, Rob. Yeah, I sure am. You know, nothing is more important to coaches than keeping their talent from in-state, from leaving. Frank Beamer, Virginia Tech head coach, I happened to do the San Francisco Diamond Walnut Bowl with the New Year's Eve. He gave me this before the game, and it's, it's a printout of the top Virginia recruits, highlighted all the guys who have committed to Virginia Tech. Up here are the top five guys, all uncommitted. Number one, Xavier Adibi. Guess who we got? Xavier Adibi. Tell me, uh, what schools have you narrowed it down to, at least at this point? Um, I'm narrowing my choices down to Virginia Tech, Tennessee, NC State, and Maryland. Now, your brother plays right now, currently, for the Hokies. How much of an influence has that or will that be on uh, your upcoming decision? I mean, it won't be too much of an influence. He just gives me tips about how to uh, handle recruiting and everything and how to handle the coaches on the phone calls and everything. So it won't be uh, too, much of a, uh, too much of a problem. How much longer we got to wait till your decision? Uh, I'll probably wait until February 5th signing day. Good, good luck. Congratulations. Thanks for your time. You know, Rob didn't have any more luck than I did. I talked to Xavier before the game and tried to get the commitment out of him. You know, I don't know if Nathaniel's going to want him to go to Virginia Tech because Xavier broke his high school sack record by two. He's probably <laughs> mad at him. He doesn't want him to go there and overshadow him. 
the Azibi brothers out of Hampton, Virginia, which is a rich, rich talent pool throughout the year. That's kicking off after the field goal. This is Andre Caldwell, who scored the East touchdown. Got it down in the corner and only gets 16 yards on the return. So the East will start 84 yards away. Dabs making the play for the West. Dabs, a kid from the San Antonio area. Led 5A Division II with 14 sacks this year. Getting an opportunity to play in front of the home folks here in the Alamo Dome. And a good crowd on hand as well. They've really done a great job promoting this game. And, of course, football is king in Texas. Now in a quarterback for the East, Clayton Richard. You know what? If you drew up his stats and listed his size, you wouldn't have to look on to know where he's going to school, would you, Mark? But you think of maybe Michigan. Yeah. One of those Michigan quarterbacks. And, and not only his size, and you look at the Michigan quarterbacks in the past they've had there. You know, here's a guy six foot five, baseball player, throws the ball 90 miles an hour plus. And I talked to his grandmother in the lobby. We were talking to yeah, her. She sure. goes, he's a great young man. He's <laughs> going to do a great job at Michigan. Make sure you mention his name. And we just did. And you're, you're looking at his future at Michigan. He is the prototype for a Michigan quarterback. He's got a 4.0 GPA, Mark. And that's the that's the best thing about him. Plus, he's a fine young man. And he's probably going to be a first round pick in the baseball draft. Well, he better not do it Drew Henson on Michigan. Right? Lloyd <laughs> no. Carr better get away from those <laughs> baseball playing <laughs> quarterbacks. But Drew made more money than Lloyd did there for a couple of years. <laughs> Darrell Blackman picked up 13 on first down for Clayton Richard. Richard to the lefty. It's going to help him in the baseball draft. He fired a dart just a little bit behind. Jason Swain is into the game. Tony Cade defending there. You know, you're talking about the 4.0 that Clayton Richard carries right now. So I, I was we were talking with his grandmother. I said, you know, the whole college experience is important. Are you at least going to let him make a B? Grandma will have none of that. No. <laughs> Not a chance. He gets nothing but straight A's. I said, let him go out and have a little fun. No. He gets straight A's. Straight A's. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Second and ten. Richard now operating this spread offense for the East. I forgot to tell you, that was on a 6.0 scale. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't want to, you know, douse your little party there. That sounds, that sounds a lot more like your position. Two of them. Here's the left. He's standing tall in the pocket and lining one down the middle, and he can't quite hook up with Vernon Davis. 6'4", 220-pounder out of Washington, D.C. Quentin Daniels on the coverage there for the West. What impresses you about Clayton Richard in the pocket when you see him, it's just effortlessly the way that he throws the ball. You know, his feet are set. You can tell he's got tremendous mechanics, but the strength just coming from his shoulders, just throwing the football is outstanding. And, and take a look at him right here. Shotgun snap goes. He knows exactly where he's going with the football. Steps up and look at the smooth motion that he has throwing the football. He's mad because he didn't hit that pass, but you can just tell he's got an arm. Third down play. These two for four. These situations. Not the first two. This West defense risen to the occasion last couple of times. Richard setting up the screen. Blackman has it. Blackman trying to get loose and a terrific open field tackle by Roundtree again. His second tackle. Pick up with just one. Excellent play in the open field by Roundtree. Right, he's just throwing me off, Reese. He's got number 82. He's the last jersey they had. He was a late addition. You'd think he'd be a wide receiver, but he's back there playing corner. Starts out playing just simple man-to-man. -man. They allow the rush to come, dump it off to Blackman, and you'll see number 82, Roundtree, come up there with a sheer open field tackle. Go for the legs. East forced into a punting situation and a little trouble getting proper personnel on the field. Eric Wilbur's the punter, and Demetrius Summers now coming in. Still plenty of time on the plate. Inside 10 minutes to go now in the first half. East with a 7 spring lead. Now they can't rush the punter, but only the front seven. They can't overpower him. Obviously, you want to stay away from Aces this game. Ball bounces dead inside the 40 on about the 37. Greg Olson putting it down there, and that is where the West will take over after the 32-yard punt. The East on top, 7-3. to three. Western Stars trying to keep their record first. Beats Eric Wilbur. Well, it's an all-star game, but you know what? It's a football game. This isn't Tedley Winks. Get ready to play football. That's just like a linebacker picking on a punter when his back's turned. He's number 14. He could have been a tight end. We don't know. I, I will say this, Mark. If the punter's going to wear a neck roll, he, he, he might deserve He's to get a shot. shot. He's protected himself from cheap shots like that. <laughs> West with the ball now, and once again... It is Reggie Bush, and once again, not much there. Tavares Gooden on the stop. 
a little help there, but Javier is the first man to arrive. Rob Stone now down on the sideline and remembering our honorary coaches tonight, Rob. Absolutely, Reese. I know Trevor's a big Disney film fan, so he obviously saw Remember the Titans in the 1971 story of the Virginia State Football Championships overcoming racial division, and these are the two honorary coaches, and the two coaches who took part in that team, Bill Yost and the assistant, Herman Boone, the head coach, and the, the trophy for the winner named the Herman Boone Award, and, and your boys have had it two years in a row, haven't they, coaching exactly. the West? Exactly, and the way they keep playing, we're going to have it three years in a row, too. I love this Matt talking on the bench. We'll have some more in a second. That is Bruce Hayden, the quarterback, giving the Reds the bush, and once again, Brian Madison in the backfield. Kirk Ferentz is just laughing and laughing watching this game, I'm sure, Rob. Yeah, Coach Boone, somebody, it's, that trophy's getting heavy, isn't it? He's trying to pawn it off on somebody. <laughs> Come on, man, hit the weight room like May over there. All right, be tough. Take your tough pill. We'll be all right here. All right, right. Hey, uh, <laughs> this is the third year of this bowl. What have you seen in, in this bowl and how it's kind of transformed and, and kind of become a, a much bigger thing for the players and, and overall in this well, country? Well, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, you know, thanks for the United States Army support. I mean, we really packed them in. This game has moved up at least two levels from last year even though last year was a great game and my good friend denzel washington he helped out a lot but good lord the army has provided the support and the, the, the ambiance in this game it is absolutely fantastic hey let coach yost at least hold the thing at one point you know could be selfish here <laughs> hey coach you're you're east over there working a little no huddle offense did you, uh, did you have take, a say in that we're going to take that cover off and put yost on there next year <laughs> hey no uh, yeah we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to get the wild Samoan out here to separate these two, huh, Reese? I mean, you, you've had it two years. That's enough. <laughs> they, got, they got along so well in the movie. <laughs> a little shuffle pass there, Kyle Wright can't complete. They talked about taking a tough pill. The West better take a tough pill. They they cannot stop Brian Madison. Once again, gets pressure on Kyle Wright. They're trying to block him with a tight end. You can't block good defensive ends with a tight end. They're getting them to jump. Very good play by Brian Madison. Let me tell you something about that tough pill. Are you going to tell Herman Boone to take a tough pill? Let me tell you something, Rob Sunshine Stone. He'll have you running from daylight to dark before this is over. <laughs> He'll have you carrying that trophy around. <laughs> West picking up his third penalty on this series. It's third and 15. Cody Freeby now there to point uh, to punt it away. Mephia Summers. Not they went deep. What great fun it was. Oh, and it's blocked. Storming through there, as we mentioned, the seven guys up front can block the thing. And storming through to block it is Louis Irizarry, listed as an athlete. And I think we see why he swatted that thing like he was coming from the weak side on a basketball play. Louis Irizarry, as the officials confer, but as I understand the rules, as I read them, guys, the guys up front, front yes. can rush. The front seven can rush. You just can't rush run. over the center. And right. I, I think maybe there's some confusions on both sides about whether you can rush, whether you can't rush. Are they relaxing the when field. they should be blocking? Illegal procedure on the offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is refused. First down. Well, the one thing I know for sure that it's always against the rules to have six men on the line of scrimmage. Here comes Irizarry. Oh, no one touched him, and that's a great job of adjusting to the ball. If you're going to block a punt, you want to lay out. He ran by the punter and reaches back. Watch, he reaches back with his right hand to block this. This is great athleticism right there. He's by the punter, puts that big paw out there, and knocks it down. Now, let me see if I can remember. Uh, Trev, where is Louis Irizarry planning to go to school? Well, he's going to Ohio State. He's got a 24 ACT, 3.9 GPA. Uh, he's an athlete. Forget the stats. Where's you he going play to school? Him at tight end. <laughs> Where's he's he going from to Youngstown, Ohio. He's Where's going to he be going a Buckeye. To he's going to the defending national champion Thank Ohio you. State Buckeye. <laughs> you know what? Tavares Good, number 90 over there on the east. Talk to him. He's going to Miami. He wanted me to clear something up. There was no pass interference. Oh, here we and, go. And, well, Tavares, I didn't say it. Tavares said it. First and goal after the blocked punt. Louis Arizari making the play, and Travis Thomas trying to get it in the end zone, struggling, fighting, and finally knocked down for a pickup of about three. Xavier Lawson Kennedy, Kyle Caldwell keeping Thomas out of the end zone. Well, and Travis told me this week, you know, if, if I try to emulate somebody, it's Eddie George. I, I kind of have his style. I mean, he's not Eddie George, but he runs a little upright. You're going to see him here. Loves to have power. Takes a lot of pride in getting yards after the first contact. You see the ups, upright running style. He gets contact, keeps his legs driving, wants to be just like Eddie George. The lead block there from Jonathan Stupar. And we heard Chris Leak in the left side of his offensive line 
apparently did not get the snap count. Flag on the play. They're down on about the two-yard line, and I think the East is going to back up. I believe Greg Olson, the tight end out of Wayne, New Jersey, is the one that moved. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. I'm trying to run the fucking power to you. And we apologize for that. We have uh, we have some open mics, and occasionally things like that will happen. Chris Lee, three out of seven, 100 yards, and touchdown pass. For Chris Lee, I think this is another opportunity that we can check out his arm strength because he may get an opportunity to throw the ball here. G265. Oh, yeah, G265. <laughs> you know, Trev, that's a run. Well, thanks. Irizarry, the lead blocker. Travis Thomas gets nothing, and he'll like it. Robert Killebrew, 6'2", 205-pounder, out of Spring, Texas, making the stop. Well, Trev, the OG 265, I was just trying to help you out because I know you're defensive players. You're only taught to find the ball. And offense, we've got terminology where we talk about numbers. You know what I would do with OG 265 when I got down the goal line? <laughs> I'd be laying on old... your back looking at the top of the Alamo Dome. <laughs> I'd get rid of OG 265 because that play don't work on the goal line because Robert Killebrew and this West team have up. way too much speed. Robert Killebrew. At last report, at his college choices down, Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, Tennessee, where they have a lot of athletic linebackers. Two tight ends set now. Olsen Davis both in there. Chris Lee, at quarterback for the East. Leak on a little waggle action as waggle because he had help, but he didn't have enough, apparently, because Kyle Caldwell was there again with his sack. Six-yard loss on the play. Caldwell has been impressive. Kyle's got 20 sacks this year alone. He's narrowed his choices to Nebraska, Arizona State, and Oregon. He came up to me before the game, and he said, hey, is there a defensive MVP? Is there? I said, no, there's not a defensive one, but you can get the MVP. Here's old Kyle, 6'3", 265. Uh, he's big enough. He can play right now. You know, a lot of guys coming in from high school, they need a year or two. He's ready now. It's amazing is, is his speed. It's 265 pounds. He runs a 4'5 and change. And you don't find that normally out of a high school athlete with that type of weight, 6'3", 265, has speed and power, knows how to get to the ball. Garrett Rivas, he missed his first field goal attempt from 37. The one from 31 is true. And with that, the East pushes its lead back to seven points. Both teams failing to cash in on opportunities. At least they're not getting as much as they could have. Deep for the West, Ernest Mason. One of the things the kickers told me this week, too, is making the adjustment of kicking off the turf for those field goals. You know, in high school, they get the little block. And he said, Garrett told me it took him a good two weeks Three, before he really got comfortable deep. kicking it off the turf. And you know what? He's going to have an artificial surface at Michigan. They're pulling up the natural grass, putting down field turf type thing. Ernest Mason hauls in the kickoff at his goal line, and Ernest will not get it back to the 20-yard line. Joe Cohen. Linebacker making the play on special teams. Gonna mark it down at the 19. Here's Rob Stone on the sideline. Well, Reese, Xavier Devi would give us no hints to where he's going, but I'm guaranteeing you a commitment right now. Prescott Burgess, defensive back from Ohio, the same town as some guy named Maurice Claret. You've narrowed it down to Notre Dame, Tennessee, Florida, the Buckeyes, and Michigan. Your decision. Uh, all right. I'm going to zip it back. I'm going to zip it back. It's a decision he's known for a long time, too, guys. Find it? I guarantee you there's a hat. There it is. Oh. Hello, Ann Arbor. <laughs> Prescott, wh why the decision? And, and it's one you told me just seconds ago you've known for a long time. Yeah, well, you know, I just picked a school that fits best for me, uh, that I'll come in knowing that I'll play and work my hardest. And they guarantee me that, so I'm going to take that chance and uh, take it from there. Difficult to leave the state of Ohio to go to a big rival? It's real difficult. You know, I'm from Ohio. I live in Ohio uh, all my life. Um, you know, people are pressuring me to go to Ohio State, but, you know, I'm one man. Uh, I'm going to make my own decision, and I decided to go to Michigan. Congratulations. Thanks for your time. Rob, Prescott, thank you very much. Well, Reese, I mean, if you're Jim Herman right now, you have verbal <laughs> commitments from Ryan Mundy, Leon Hall, Anton Campbell, and now Prescott Burgess, who told me, I said, who's the best hitter here? It's me. I said, who's the biggest prospect here? Uh, that'd be me. He's not lacking in confidence, and neither should Jim Herman. He's got a fantastic set 
defensive backs coming from Michigan. Johnny DeRosa is throwing the ball out in the flat there. Ernest Mason, who we saw back deep on the kickoff, picking up just one after grabbing it. Zibikowski on the stop. I'll tell you who else is a big catch right now. The previous play was a sack by Victor Abameri again, Mark. Very, very impressed with him, his speed and his size. And, and not only that, when you look at players in this game, what they want to do is get to the quarterback. They want to make an impression as a defensive lineman. He's made an impression on me. And you look at him, he's not really that big, 240 pounds, but he has the height. You know he's going to fill out. But his quickness to get to the quarterback, and we're still in the second quarter, and he's been to the quarterback three or four times. And you know, he's not lacking in confidence either. Trace said no one can block him. He said, by the time this game's over, Mark, they're going to be double triple team me they just won't be able to slow me down well, both defensive ends for the east have been really unstoppable uh, i tell you jory adams has gotten a lesson good protection this time and there's abby mary again yep. right on adams did a nice job on him for a while but he couldn't do it forever and abby mary with the sack that's really a coverage sack there the yes. defensive backs of the east did a great job dante whitner ambrose wooden it's all man-to-man -man coverage and if you can cover people man-to-man -man for two and a half to three seconds you know you've done a great job as defensive back yeah but the key is abermary on this play he doesn't give up this is what coaches look for continue until the whistle blows and that's exactly what he does he could have easily just said okay i'm not getting to the quarterback somebody else get him but he kept to the play kept going to the quarterback so he got four tackles a couple of sacks pressured the quarterback a couple of other times now the west is going to have to kick it away Sweet low snap, and Irizarry is back there again, and Freeview's in a world of trouble, and we're going to have a safety. I think if I'm John, uh, I'm sorry, I think if I'm Jim Dressel, not John Cooper, I think I'll take, uh, I'll take all my athlete over there, and I might put him on pl punt block. Another great play. And how about the fine play again on the punt block team by Lewis Irizarry. He's already blocked the punt, and then he's back there to score the safety for the East. It's 12-3. With the red shirt business. I think so. He's got a tremendous athlete. That's why they listed him this game as an athlete. Played tight end in high school. 25 catches, eight touchdowns over 700 yards. But here you're getting an athlete. You need players like this as freshmen. If you're going to make an impression on a coach as a freshman, you're going to do it on special teams. And I think right now you're looking at a player that's already proven in this game on two plays on, on punt coverage that he can get down, he can put punt pressure and pressure on the punter, and he's done that twice already. Man, oh man, what talent they have in Youngstown, Ohio, too. We just saw Prescott Burgess making his decision. State of Ohio, really, throughout the entire uh, Prescott from Warren. Here is Zari from the Youngstown area. Traditionally, year in, year out, produces a number of 1A players. This is a smaller division. This is Andre Caldwell who has a touchdown tonight. Andre might be on his way for another one. Taking the free kick, Andre Caldwell. Getting inside the 30-yard line of the West. Andre Caldwell, 52 yards. I don't think Rache could have done it better. No, not at all. And I think if you're Ron Zook right now, you're on the phone to Rache saying, hey, we need him here. We got to get him here. We need a player like this that's an impact player. And that's what Andre is. And he does a tremendous job of following his blockers. Right there, sitting up the wall, makes a great cut. Now look at the black jerseys in front of him. He weaves in and out between the defenders. And then right there, he turns it on and picks up the extra yardage. That's what you want out of a pump returner, to plant and go and pick up the yardage straight ahead. That's exactly what Andre did on that play. Caldwell with a 78-yard touchdown catch, now a 52-yard punt return. Got a good block from Jonathan Stupar, who's on his way to Virginia. Quentin Daniels, too, and Chris Lee trying to make a pay right off the bat, and there it is. Chris Lee, a Darius Bowman, touchdown. What a throw. He was open, I know, but what a beautifully thrown ball. 30 yards to the house for the East. And it's really difficult to lead a receiver like this, Trevin. A lot of quarterbacks, when they get in this situation and the receiver's so open, they overthrow him or underthrow him. But what Chris Leak does is he stands tall in the pocket, puts the exact pressure on the football, the exact law, and just drops it right down to his receiver. Very impressed with Chris Leak sitting back in the pocket, knowing where he wants to go with the football. You mentioned it, the touch. And how about a Darius Bowman? John Bunting landing a big-time wide receiver. He's going to North Carolina. He was the best wide receiver in all of Tennessee. A nice player for John Bunting in North Carolina. He's a two-time Mr. Football in the state of Tennessee. He's crossing the border and going to be a Tar Heel. At least that's his verbal commitment at the moment. And Darius Bowman the rifle arm of Chris Lee. And at the right of your screen, he never breaks stride. Hits him in full stride right there to score the touchdown. 
see Bowman beating Leon Hall on the play. And that's the whole key as a wide receiver. You see the size, six foot four, 215 pounds. When you get the hands of the corner off here, you can separate, use your speed, and that's what Bowman did that time. Well, you know, a lot of times, guys, when a guy has been hyped the way Chris Lee has for the last several years, Wake Forest, who originally signed his brother CJ, offered him a scholarship as a high school freshman. Wow. And Let me Chris say, Lee, he's one of the mo more modest kids you'll ever meet. He's very grounded, and I think his parents have a lot to do with that. Both he and his brother are just wonderful kids. <laughs> it's 19 to 3, but uh, oh, wait, we're going to find out at halftime, Reese, where he goes. And, and the thing that Chris told me, because of what happened to CJ and all those sorts of things, the place he's going is not necessarily anything other than the place that he trusts the most. He feels like when he makes his decision, he's going to go to the place where he can trust the coaches to take care of him. You know, it's part of the consequences of having relatives on the team. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. And Chris felt like that CJ didn't really get a fair shake at Tennessee. You know, and that's certainly the way not over. Always, yeah, you're always going to, to take up for your relatives. For, sure. for a long time, we saw that Tennessee had the inside track on Chris Lee. And, but what do you have to do if you're Phil no, You have to coach your team. You have to play the guy that you think should be playing. Right. And, and the whole situation revolved around the Georgia game this year when Casey Pawson was out and CJ started the game and, and didn't stay in the game long and, and brought in Banks. Yeah, I brought in James Banks who who's another alum of the All American team. And it, it was a difficult situation and one that it appears at the moment as Cross Tennessee now standing quarterback. West now down by 16 and Ernest Mason trying to Get his team back in the game with a big return. He's up just inside his own 35, a 19-yard return on the play for Ernest Mason. Don't forget, more college football action coming your way on Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 out on the West Coast from Pac Bell Stadium, the East-West Shrine Game. Tyrone Willingham, the East squad, going against Mike Price and the West. Jason Gesser, Seneca Wallace, the Heisman winner Carson Palmer will be there. It's a good showcase, and Mark, as you and I know, there are a ton of NFL scouts who spend a lot of time at the East-West Shrine game. And that'll be a lot of fun to watch at that game, and we're going to see some of the players there. Obviously, we're going to go to the next level of the NFL, but we did have a lot of fun there, but the scouts are all over. They're watching the kids eat dinner. They're watching them dress in the locker room. We want to find out everything about these kids, and, and it's a phenomenal week for those players out there. But I want to go back to the last touchdown pass, Darius Bowman. How do you let a Mr. Tennessee, a two-time Mr. Tennessee, get out of your state? You're supposed to circle the state and put a fence up and say you can't leave the state if you're Phil Fulmer with a player like this. But you're right, Trev. John Bunny must have did one heck of a sales. Great job of recruiting. And I think what you're seeing in this game, if you're a Miami fan and you're seeing Kyle Wright, you're saying he's our, you know, hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. I, I think that the East has done a great job of getting pressure on Kyle. And those defensive backs of the East have done a great job of playing man coverage. Hasn't been any but where to go with the ball. And so far right now, Kyle Wright hasn't put up the big number to see two of six, only 30. 13 yards and an interception. You know, Mark, you brought up the point about building a fence around the state, and, you know, I want to alleviate the concern of some of the Buckeye Nation. Trev was actually doing a little recruiting, and I, I'm, I'm not kidding about this, for Ohio State. There are a number of kids in this game from the state of Ohio. It has wonderful high school football, as we know. And Trev, tell me what you told the kids from Ohio as a group. Well, you had guys like Sheehan Cotton, you had Sean Grable, and Prescott Burgess, and Dante Whitner. I said, well, why aren't all of you guys going together to Ohio State to play for Jim Tressel? And they told me, ah, you gotta be your own individual, man. You gotta be your own guy. We need to make our own mark. And you see Prescott Burgess going to the University of Michigan. Now, right now, Frank Solich has your picture and he's throwing darts at it. <laughs> Nebraska, saying a Nebraska guy's not recruiting for my school, his school. <laughs> well, I asked him who his finals were. And <laughs> Got a call on the field. Flag on the play, guys. Obviously, it was movement on the left side of the offensive line from the west. The west just can't quite get started. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Second out. My apologies yeah, uh, to the left side of the West offensive it. line. Obviously, the movement from the defense causing them to jump. I'm sure Mark's going to point this out. The West, as we know, did not wear full pads this week. Kind of had some more fun, you know. Yep. Is it showing in the game, Mark? You must pay the price to win. You have to be callous out there. The East went out. They hit a couple of times in practice this week. Had a couple of two-a-days, and I think it's showing today. Drew Tate in at quarterback now. Tate firing down the middle, and the ball is almost intercepted, and it is. Picked off by Ryan Mundy. Ryan Mundy off the tip by Corey McEwen. 
from Naperville, Illinois, making the tip and the diving interception there by Monday. And now they're going to talk it over. No, that was an interception. We want to take another look at this one right here. Ryan Monday goes over the top. It's tip. Both hands are underneath the ball. Oh, by the slip through, but they're going to give it to him. It's good. No Corey instant McEwen. replay Corey in the McEwen. U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Corey McEwen <laughs> did a nice job as a linebacker of getting depth, playing zone there as a linebacker, Mark. Well, let me explain it to you here. When you run a little play action pass so many times, you see those linebackers get sucked up. That's what you want to do as a quarterback. But as a defensive player, Corey McEwen does a great job of getting depth and making it difficult for the quarterback to throw over you. Good play by McEwen and a very difficult start for Drew Tate out of Baytown Lee High School here in Texas. Most efficient quarterback in Texas high school history. In fact, last year, Tate won the AP Offensive Player of the Year over a couple guys you might know, Vincent Young and Reggie McNeil at Texas and Texas a and respectively. Clayton Richard now in a quarterback for the East, and he just about threw a pick six looking for Sean Bailey out there, and Roundtree was on the coverage again. Let me tell you something. Leonard Roundtree's not a big guy, Mark. No, but I'll tell quick. you what. He is fast. He breaks on the football. I'm impressed with Leonard Roundtree. He was a late addition. They didn't know he was going to play just until a couple of days ago because Antonio Cromartie was supposed to play in this game. It canceled out, and Leonard Roundtree, that's why he's wearing 82 because that was the last jersey they had. He didn't know he was going to play, and this is the player who hasn't played in a month and a half. He's showing up some of the players that have practiced the entire week. Cromartie, an outstanding player for the state of Florida, highly recruited by most of the schools in the state and in the SEC. Richard gets a lot of pressure. You see that arm strength. But swung it out there all arm and into double coverage. Bowman had no chance at that one. Wow. But that's impressive. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even move his feet. In the He's pot. got a gun, he doesn't he? Zing and it's gone. That's an impressive young man right there. What, what the next level for all of these quarterbacks, doesn't matter if it's Chris Leak or Brady Quinn or Clayton Richard, as you see Clayton Richard stand in the pocket here, the next step is they all have the physical ability. But when you get to the collegiate level, it's 50 50, 50 mental. 50 all of a sudden physical you're going to see different defenses zone man half zone half man and that's where the improvement will come for all these quarterbacks this defense because it's the best of the best is so much faster than most of these guys see week in and week out and it's going to go up infinitely when they step foot on a 1a practice see most of these guys will see one or two guys with this kind of speed but not all 11. here's richard again gets good time firing a dart and a little miscommunication firing it well behind Caldwell. You know, one of the other things, Reese, is some of these quarterbacks like Johnny DeRocher was telling me, he said one of the biggest adjustments he had to make with all these linemen were 6'4 and 6'5. Mm -hmm. He said just throwing over them, and that's obviously what's going to happen in college, too. When he goes to Oregon, those linemen aren't 6'1 and 6'2 like they are in high school. Eric Wilbur and his neck roll <laughs> on to punch for the East. Could have his head on a swivel hey, for Thomas you Williams something. again. I, I, you know, you know, you know where a neck roll is a punter, Reese. Well, I enjoy the kicking game as much as the next guy, and probably more than most of the next guys. I like to see my kicker with a neck roll, my punter with a neck roll. It means he plans on going down there and setting his hair somebody. on fire and causing a wreck. You know, he, so. he runs a 4 5 40 and squats 610 pounds. Up here's the infraction. 12 men on the field, five yard penalty remains fourth down. Oh, that's what the West has been doing the whole yeah, game. Yeah, using 12 guys. The way things are going right now, I heard 12, maybe 13 before it's over. Well, I guarantee you. I mean, a Eric, couple of them blocking Abba Mary. Eric Wilbur didn't just punch baseball. He's probably a safety. He's right. probably a... Center make him give up his next goal in college. Wilbur gets it away. The West trying to answer the block kick of their own. We've already had a couple of miscues in the kicking game. The East, Louis Irizarry. Beneficiary of both ball going dead inside the 20, 34 yard punt. We're going to put it in play on the 18 yard line. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, you guys are discussing why would a Darius Bowman, Mr. Tennessee, leave Tennessee for Chapel Hill, North Carolina? Let's go to the source. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed Tennessee recruiting me and everything, but North Carolina really had everything that I was wanting as far as college wise. Coming in, a chance to play real early, great academics, and just very, I love it out there. Great coach of stuff. You average a double double on the uh, hardwood. Has Matt Doherty contacted you? <laughs> uh, we we're trying to get into that. We're trying to arrange that. <laughs> uh, no better place than ESPN2 to sell your story, huh? Yeah, no better place. All right, good luck. Thank you. Rob Darius, thank you very much. This is a great catch by Bowman. He's 6'4. He's got the good size that so many teams are looking for wide receivers. Long arms. 
19-3 game. West trying to get a drive going here just before the half. And Kyle Wright showing some of that mobility getting to the corner. Well, this is a designated running play all the way. They took Lima Swede Jr. They put him in motion, used him as a blocker, and Kyle Wright showing his speed there. I mentioned getting outside. This is not a Kent Dorsey-type quarterback that Miami's used to. This is a guy with a lot of mobility and speed at the quarterback position. Picking up 17 yards on that one, Miami and Larry Coker. They'll take the mobility for sure, and they hope they just get half the leadership that Ken Dorsey provided over the last few it's years. Big 77, Jory Adams out front leading the block. Cousin Zach Bronson plays for the 49ers. I guess old Jory got most of the meals, huh, Mark? That's what you're supposed to do if you're bigger. Johnny DeRosier is trying to set up the screen to Lendale White. Throws it at his feet. More pressure from the east, sort of messing up that play. Lawrence Moe Dampier. Providing the pressure. And you know what? Dampier is another example of the reason guys come to this game. He's a kid out of Decatur, Illinois, a world of talent, being recruited by just about everyone. Wasn't really sure how he was going to stack up against the best of the best. And it sort of opened up his horizons, perhaps, perhaps, to Ron hey, Turner. Let's, go. let's get in rhythm. Right now. Eight pro pap 88. On two, on two. Ready? Kyle Wright. That's yeah, Kyle Wright in the huddle. Here we go. Here we go. Hunt, hunt. Here's right now in the pocket, and this time he's got time, but he skips a pass out there to the right side. Talking to Dan Pierce coaches today, probably there is no clear cut leader, but if he had to choose one right now, it'd probably be Oklahoma. And if you look at not only his size, this is a big man. And I sat down when I spoke to him the other day and I said, Well, how much steak did you eat in a steak eating contest? Ta da, I don't like steak. Look at the guy, he's 300 pounds. What's he eating if he's not eating steak? But this is a guy that's got great feet, and he said that he comes from a small town. He wanted to prove that he could play with the big guys in the big league, and that was one thing he wanted to do here is tell everybody and show everybody that he can stand up and play with the big boys, and he's done that thus far in this game. Got 12 and a half sacks this year at 3.2 grade point average. I mean, he's, he's a... You can't find defensive linemen. Good defensive linemen with good feet and good hands are difficult to find in high school football. DeRocher has to call a timeout. Play clock is getting down there. 19 to 3 the east with the lead west trying to get something going just before the half mark talked about the the feedback that these guys put on and it was a steak eating contest wednesday night at the crystal steakhouse here in san antonio it was a competition oh look at that big hunk of beef right there i couldn't believe we weren't invited yeah well yeah you know, well that's the thing the winning team of this gets to take on trev albert if you've ever seen Trevi, oh, he, he put down a few of those. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, look at this look guy. At we got, we got to come back to that. We got to get our, our producer, Patrick, down here. Come, we got to look at that face, Patrick. I mean, he, he's got the grease all over his face, and he's got the sauce on his face, and his elbows are deep in it, and, you know, he's just not worried about anything. Just taking the fork and sticking it in and shoving it in his mouth. Forget a knife. He doesn't need one. How about the numbers on this? Look at that. Oh, look, look at that, that face. Look at this right here. Look, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's just uncalled for. That's just sloppy. <laughs> you don't need a knife and fork. Use your hands. Uh, Trev. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, you got to get a wide bite on that. <laughs> and, you know, I think they ought to make it rule. It's sort of like eating ribs. There's no wiping until you're finished. I, I applaud that. 103 pounds of beef went down the gullet. The East won it with 52 pounds. Here's DeRosa. DeRosa going up top for Lima Sweet Jr. and closing quickly on the play is Ryan Mundy, and he's there with his second interception of the game. Mundy closing beautifully on that ball. And, and speaking to a lot of the players and coaches here, when you ask who are the best players here, they mention Kyle Wright. They mentioned quarterback Chris Lee, but they also mentioned Ryan London. Yep. He's got the size of an NFL player now, 6'2", 205, but he's built like a mature man, a 25-year-old. Look at the action, the eye, the hand coordination, and the strength to take it away from the receiver on this play. And for Lloyd Carr, you're getting a heck of a player. They right. talked about the Fab Five in basketball. He's getting the Fab Four in the defensive secondary. Well, he, he told me that he's from Pennsylvania. So he's got this. He said, you know what? It felt like home away from home. He just fell in love with this show and the coaching staff. I mean, Jim Herman, the defensive staff. Coordinators just got to be thrilled with all these TVs he's getting. Brady Quinn now in there at quarterback, dumping it out to Demetrius Summers and Summers. Getting good yardage out to the side, picking up the first down, gets 18 on the play. Well, Summers is a great story. Here's a guy who broke all of Derek Watson's records in South Carolina. He broke Emmett Smith's national consecutive 100 yard, 100 yard rushing games. Demetrius Summers, he told me that Jacqueline, his mother, is going to help him make his decisions. Got about three or four guys. Had a late flag, guys.
is a sportsmanlike conduct penalty has been called on the West. So the East, after getting a good game from Summers, is going to have an opportunity, quite frankly, to put this game out of reach, perhaps by halftime, if they're able to, to stick another one in. They're going to get 15 here. It's going to put them in West territory. And, and you know that's the difference between Trev and myself, because evaluating what? talent and you know, player personnel guys. That's why I took the East, because you know, I watched them practice and talk to these players, and you could tell that you know they had tremendous athletes on the East side. I mean, that's just experience, Trev. You'll, you'll, you'll gain that, you know, down the road. I'll, I'll keep working, Mark. I, I won't call Jim Tressel, you know, John Cooper anymore. Here, I, you know. <laughs> We're, we're trying, you know. I, I think Reggie Lawrence has a nice game plan. You're doing, you're doing fine, partner. You're doing fine. Here's Brady Quinn out of the shotgun, a little option look, and he got drilled and paid for it, but loose is Daryl Blackman, and Blackman getting down to the 30. Anton Campbell stopped 16 yards on the pickup. Brady Quinn heading to Notre Dame, 25 touchdowns, only four interceptions. We know about Tyrone Willingham and how he loves to win the turnover battle. Obviously, Brady Quinn doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Nice pitch there. How many times do you think you ran the option in high school? Not often. He comes enough. to the All-Star <laughs> game and they go, hey, Brady, we got a little option play. You might get drilled. He's like, what's that? <laughs> option what? And it was a late Christmas present for Kyle Caldwell, who got to put it right in All Quinn's teeth. Okay, guys, who's your early leader for the Pete Dawkins MVP? Anybody? I know it's only half. Give a half time here. Anybody? Victor Abameri. Okay. The big guys had a great game this far. A couple of sacks and knocked the quarterback around a little bit. Four tackles, two sacks. Brian Madison. How about defensive ends played well? I've got a couple of guys for you. How about Chris Leak? He's four of eight, 130 yards, couple of touchdowns. Paul Wells been outstanding with the touchdown. It's going to be hard. And the punt return to set it up. Yep. A lot of deserving candidates right now. All of them, frankly, on the east at the moment. <laughs> 19 to 3 inside 30 seconds to go in the first half. U.S. Army All-American Bowl from San Antonio. A little bit later on tonight on ESPN2, College Hoops Tonight. Getting the conference season cranked up. That's a show I'm heavily involved with. Looking forward to a great season of College Hoops Tonight. Big battle today in the SEC. We'll have it all for you. Coming up when we finish. A little while after. You're going to miss us, Reese. Absolutely. Well, you know, we find it. He gets in the studio with the college basketball people. Do you miss us? Nah, you guys do the best. The basketball guys do the best. He goes from us uglies, too. <laughs> Jay Billis, Andy Katz, Digger. Brady Quinn firing it out to the right side and in and out of the hands of his receiver. Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey out there, wide receiver, 6'1", 175 pounder out of Alpha Red. Coming up at halftime, we'll look back at the plays of the year in college football and listen to the big hits in the season just passed. And Chris Lee out of Charlotte, North Carolina, will make his announcement about where he plans to attend college. We've already had a couple of announcements. The first half of this game, Prescott Burgess on his way to Michigan. Brady Quinn announced earlier he's on his way to Notre Dame and trying to get his team on his way to the end zone, and he skips one out there. Again, looking for Bailey. Ball might have been tipped the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a third down play for the East. And for Brady Quinn, he's going to get an excellent opportunity to play as a freshman, I believe, at Notre Dame. If you look at what they have now at the quarterback position, Carlisle Holiday's more of an option quarterback. And I think the other problem, Trev, is they don't have any depth at the quarterback position because Tyrone Willingham wasn't able to really recruit. Well, you know, they have Chris Olson, yeah. who is uh, the brother yep. of Greg Olson, who's a tight end in this game, and Ty was able to redshirt him to get out of Wayne, New Jersey. Highly thought of last year. In fact, we saw him tossing a ball around the sideline to the Michigan State game, and Farlow got hurt. Here's Quinn going upstairs, throwing into double coverage, and oh, that ball is picked off in the end zone by Quentin Daniels. So the West avoiding what might have been the decisive blow had the East been able to get in the end zone there. Quentin Daniels making the play, and it would advise throw really by the young quarterback. And he's got to throw this into the coverage right here. There's tremendous coverage, but Quentin Daniels coming over the top of safety position, Trev, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, that's the thing as a young quarterback. You have to figure out whether you've got man defense, whether you have zone. Is the safety sitting in the middle of the field? And you know what? That brings up an interesting point, Fred, because really, in the man coverage, you're not really supposed to have safety help over the top. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but it looked to me like we had a little man with a little safety help over the top. Reese. I, I don't know if not we're going to change the rules again. or... Well, we got to help the West a little bit. This will be the last play of the first half in all likelihood. Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Wow. Lateraling the ball. And look who's got his hands on it. Big 71 
one, Ryan Harris getting a touch. Pete Carroll's taking that out of the playbook, young man. <laughs> oh, he's just having fun. I, I, I am impressed with Reggie Bush. I mean, there's a young man with some speed and some moves. Pete Carroll right now is thinking that football must stay riveted to your rib cage. Chris Lee had a big first half. He's going to announce where he's going to school at halftime. Four out of eight, 130 yards through a couple of touchdown passes. And the East, which has never won this All-Star game, is on top big. We're back with a halftime show after this. Halftime, the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, the East, jumping on top of the West, 19-3. We've played this classic two times. The West has won the first two installments. The East came here with a purpose. They hit in pads that you guys talked about. We'll see if they can hold it up through the second half. You know, we really enjoy it. We had a great time this year in this college football season yeah, pass. It culminated did. with Ohio State winning the national championship in the Fiesta Bowl, but there were great moments along the way. to the end zone. Charles Rogers with the catch. Touchdown MSU! Here's Henry Miller! Brown's got it. And he breaks into the open. 40, 50, bye-bye. Volunteers trail in the sixth overtime. Five, three, Patrick McGinnis. Wins. It's over. Tennessee win. Wallace under center, back to throw. Pumping, looking, running to his right, getting chased, almost caught, but now he's starting to go upfield, the 25 to 20. Back to the 10, touch to the center of the field, a huge block at the 10 yard line, and to the left side to the 5, and Wallace will go in to score. Oh my goodness, what a rush by Wallace. Guy Boris just got some Gatorade dumped on him. I think he'd feel a whole lot better had the clock ran out. Randall, as time expires, lets it fly. Oh, my goodness! Touchdown, LSU! They win the game! They win the football game! Block, gets one from Suggs, gets another one on the corner, inside the 10, a touchdown tap. <laughs> so NC State's dream season will end. This one starts the same way, but Myrie breaks free from Kyle. On foot race, Brandon Myrie, touchdown. It is intercepted. championship might have just gone up in smoke. It'll be only the first loss for Oklahoma. Second down and eight. Larry Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson! From 43 yards away for the win. The kick on the way. He missed it! Wide left! And they're going to get another crack at it. Can they add 2002 to the list? For the first time in history, 13 and 0, the Buckeyes. And the Buckeyes cashed in with the big bag of Tostitos finishing off a perfect season. Jim Pressel winning his fifth national championship, first in 1A. 
And Trev, I don't know, Mark, if you noticed, but all season long, it seemed as if our partner, perhaps, was public enemy number one in Columbus, Ohio, because of a fairly innocuous statement. Well, it, it was all an innocent statement sometime in October when I was watching Ohio State, watching Iowa, and I said at the time that Iowa was the best team in the Big Ten, and somehow that got turned into that Ohio State's bad and Jim Trestle doesn't know how to coach. <laughs> Congratulations to Jim Trestle, Ohio State Buckeyes. You've Unbelievable. Seen, you've seen the error of your ways yes. now, yep. and we Thank would you. like to show I'm going to wear this with pride, and I'd like to make a prediction. Preseason number one, oh, the Ohio State oh, Buckeyes. Stop. You're going to let him get away with no that? Well, way. I think they're the best team, seriously. Uh, I think the Stan White, the Stan White, White Jr. jersey Junior. from the National Championship game. Buckeye lover, That's Trev right. Alberts, right here. Give me some love. Chris Sleep, where will he go? That question will be answered shortly. Andre Caldwell got the East off to a great start, a 78-yard touchdown. He can't quite dunk. That's okay. 19-3, East up. Presented by the United States Army, an army of one. Just a few steps away from the pride and focal point of the city, the Riverwalk in San Antonio, Texas, we're at the Alamo Dome. U.S. Army All-American Bowl East on top by count of 19 to 3 while the crowd enjoys the tunes of ricochet country western group from inside the Alamo Dome how about if you enjoy a little percussion with the hits of the year in college football Picture-perfect tackle. Oh, my goodness, he took a hit. Dumped it off the pen. And he is blocked. Down. Turning it to the outside. And down. Takes a hit. Oh, my. are big hits. Here's the biggest hit of the night. Chris Leak's decision. He's with Rob Stone. Thanks, Reese. Just spoke with Chris Leak. Nobody knows where he's going outside of Chris and his family, the candidates, USC, Iowa, Florida, Florida State. Chris, your decision. 
Well, first I want to thank ESPN for giving me this opportunity to announce my college choice. Going, to the, going into the recruiting process, I had three questions. First, where can I get a great education? Second, could I trust what I was being told? And third, could I play a part in, in winning a national championship? Texas, Southern Cal, Iowa, Florida, and Florida State are among the great programs you can trust, and this makes my decision tough. However, I am asking all the top recruits to come join me and win a national championship. Out of all the schools recruiting me, there is one that has made a commitment to my future that is second to none. With that commitment, I am trusting what I have been told and following my heart. Today, I am officially committing to Coach Ron Zook and the University of Florida. Did Rex Grossman's decision to leave early for the NFL have any impact on your decision? Uh, you know, uh, you know with, with Rex being there, I mean, he would have been a great tutor for me. I would have learned the game under him. It just would have been a great, a great situation with him, that, with him there for me. When did you make this decision? Uh, you know, uh, it, it, uh, based main, mainly this week, you know, because uh, you know, I, I just, my, my brother told me to follow my heart, and that, that's what I did. Chris, congratulations. Put on the hat, friend. And look at this. You are right now scraping Ron Zook off the ceiling yeah. in his house. The Gators have a big-time quarterback again. Rex Grossman on his way out. Chris Leak on his way in. He's thrown a couple of touchdown passes in this game, and Chris Leak is Gainesville bound. Bowman making the catch here. We'll talk more about this commitment when we come back. In San Antonio, Texas, the East on top of the West by a count of 19 to 3, and as the score might indicate, this is the first half that has been controlled largely by the East. See the rushing yards fairly close, but the huge differences in passing yards and the result, the reason that that's a problem, guys, or, or has been a problem for the West trying to get it, not the quarterbacks, not the receivers, but the fact that the defensive line of the East is getting a lot of pressure. And they are, and that's the key. If you can't stand in the pocket and throw the football, you're not going to be able to compete them down the field to play, obviously. And what the East has been able to do is collapse the pocket of the West of the offensive line and not allowing their quarterbacks to throw the football. Well, turnovers obviously a problem, yeah. too. With, uh, six turnovers. Six turnovers in the first half. But, you know, you don't want to excuse it, but you are from time to time going to see some sloppy play an all-star game. You see the U.S. Army trying to get his message down. I was talking to Herman Boone, legendary coach who, of course, was the inspiration for Remember the Titans, and he was talking about what a different feel it is nowadays for kids going into the Army. Talk Chris, about a different feel. Yeah. How about Ron Zook, the way he's feeling <laughs> now that Chris Leak, I mean, he had to have a big-time quarterback. I mean, you know, and Ed Zonbrecher, the offensive coordinator there at Florida, I, I don't think that Ed really felt like he could do his whole offense with Rex Grossman. Rex really, I, I don't know that he really truly embraced Ed's offense, you know, in terms of running the option at some times. And I'm, Chris Leak is the perfect fit for what Ed Zahnbrecher wants to do in offense. Roll the quarterback, be able to throw, run the option, be multiple. Here's a guy that had 185 touchdowns in high school. Great. No, no high school quarterback has ever thrown right. And, and I think the key what you're getting with Chris Leak is you're getting a Rex Grossman with feet and with speed and with the ability to run the football. And that's what they want out of this offense around Zook. But right now, I'll bet Mrs. Zook has probably cracked open that smelling <laughs> sauce right now. Waving over. Ryan, it's true. It's true. He did say Florida. Now, the thing is keep it. You know, all of these kids want to be the men of their words, but th these verbal commitments are not binding, but in most cases, did, certainly this will be Did you hear what Chris said, though, on the sideline? I'd like all of the rest of the recruits to join me. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, as, if you're sitting out there and you're a high school player, where's the hot place to go? And you say, yeah, I'm a defensive lineman, I'm a linebacker, I'm a running back, and I know that I've got Chris Leap going there. That makes a big input. You know, we'll see if, if, if a lot of other players decide to choose to follow Chris Leap. And, you know, that happens in all-star games a lot. Last year in this very game Vincent Young fine red shirt at Texas who will be a freshman redshirt freshman next year was undecided at the moment and a lot of the kids who had committed to Mac Brown in Texas they were flashing into hook and horn signs and trying to get Vincent Young to come with it second half is underway now the East kicking off and Reggie Bush Reggie Bush who committed in the first half to USC or hard couldn't quite slip the tackle Gets it out to the 20-yard line before Dante Whitner brings him down. Our ESPN2 game track, Louis Irizarry from the East coming up with a punt block and also causing a safety again on punt teams when he chased down Cody Freeby here and slammed him to the turf for the East safety. And Chris Lee 
the newest Florida Gator. Four of 830 yards, a couple of touchdowns, including a 78-yarder to Andre Caldwell. That one coming with pressure in his face. And now the West is going to try to get a little offense going. Kyle Wright headed to Miami, gets his first pass, knocked him through the air. He tried to pull it down and might have hit Jory Adams, his tackle, into the back of, and right in the back of the noggin. Yeah, it did. And if you look at Kyle Wright, he's not used to having a six foot seven left tackle when he takes a short drop and turning to throw the ball. And that's something he's got to get used to because in college at Miami, you're going to get those big tackles. So when you take that short drop for a quarterback, you've got to use your eyes a little bit better. You've got to use your vision and see that you've got to loft that ball a little more. You can't throw that dart right over that offensive tackle. Well, Mark, I want you to keep your eye on Adams for a couple of plays here, too. I want, to want your opinion on whether he's playing. Well, here's Reggie Bush getting to the outside. I think they're going to give him about four before he was knocked back again by Whitner, who has great speed, great cover skills, and doesn't mind laying a hat on you. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark D'Antonio, the defensive coordinator of Ohio State, is going to absolutely love this young man. He, he's a speedster. He's got a 3.4 GPA, but that's the thing he told me all week. You know, I know I'm only six foot, 180 pounds, but I love to fly up and smack people in the mouth. He did it right there. And that's the whole thing. He told me that, that Dustin Fox was playing corner at Ohio State right now is going to move to his more natural free safety position and Dante Whitner told me he really thinks he's got a chance to start as a true freshman for the defending national champion Ohio State Buckeyes. He's got a pretty good corner on that other side too. Chris Gamble. Here's Kyle Wright back in the quarterback and again he's getting some heat. Keon Cotton there to force him and then Sean Crable forcing him out of bounds there. The East defense. Sean Crable's a great story, too, guys. 6'6", 230-pounder. Crable out of Massey in Ohio. Raised by a foster mother, one of 14 foster children. Ella Kirkland took him in when, she was when he was 11. Sort of introduced him to sports, and Crable has become a big-time recruit now as a defensive end. 17 sacks on the season. Another guy who has Ohio State, Michigan, Miami, Pittsburgh. Talked about the number of guys going to Michigan, Ohio State getting some good commitments. Sean Crable, another guy, 6'6", 225, really has a long way to fill out. 18 points a game in basketball, it's an all-around athlete. So the West in its opening drive doesn't get anything going offensively. Now they have to burn a timeout. Cody Freebie awaiting punt. You know, the U.S. Army, a big part of this game, and certainly there is a deep, rich tradition of college football at West Point. Pete Dawkins, 1958, won the Heisman Trophy. He was a well-rounded guy, went on to become a brigadier general. He is now retired. Dawkins was a Rhodes Scholar, MVP of this game, and pick up the Pete Dawkins Trophy, and he is standing by with Rob Stone. And there's a good look at the trophy. You cut quite a good figure there as a young man. That's artistic license, I think, <laughs> is what they've done with that thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. Yeah, it's great. We'll come back to you in one second. Wait for this kick. And the punt rolls out of bounds. At the 49-yard line, that is where the East will take over. Line. This is your second year involved in this game. Uh, how have you seen it kind of grow in just one year? Well, it's it's remarkable. First of all, we were outside in the cold last year. We're inside in this wonderful environment this year. Yeah. But there are probably twice as many things going on, twice as many people. The athletes are the same, though. And what's really impressive, you know, to me, it's a little bit of a glimpse into the future of football when you see these kids out here and the athleticism, uh, the, just the, the strength, the talent. I mean, as I look ahead to the future of football, it's a pretty promising look from this from this bandage. From the retired brigadier general to the field general, Chris Lee, gets the ball on the inside handoff to Travis Thomas. Not much there. Chris Dabbs on the tackle. Rob? Now, how do you think you'd fare out here in your heyday? Oh, listen. It is so different. I mean, these are mature, muscled, developed, trained, uh, developed athletes. Uh, they are so, they are light years ahead where we were uh, when we were coming out of our college years. And I think that's really a reflection of what's happening to the sport now. I mean, all you have to do is look at these, and, and they, are, they are schooled, trained, experienced athletes, and it's, the level just keeps going up and up. It's nice to see. Chris Lee going down, trying to scramble out. Jason Jack will help the dance ball four on the play. It's going to bring up third down and long for the East. Rob? 
Rob Stone been talking with retired Brigadier General Pete Dawkins. You know okay, I've, I've noticed something here, Reese. The West, I think the West, because they're down, they're playing a little man with a little safety deep. They're keeping old Quentin Daniels back deep, and I think Chris Leak is saying, wait a minute. He's got an injured player down on the field, and this is the one thing. You never want to see an injury any time, but particularly in an all-star game. We'll get the identity of the player who's been shaken up for the West and an update on his condition when we continue. The U.S. Army All-American Bowl from San Antonio. Trying to get some pressure. It looks like at the end he's just going to get rolled up on. Looks like Trip Carroll kind of got tangled up with him there. Carnell Stewart is Cordell Stewart's brother. Big kid out of Metairie, Louisiana, and John Curtis High School. And blocked four punts, five field goals, 20 sacks. The thing I noticed about Cornell is, is just Cornell's the way he uses his hands. His such long arms. Guy 6'6 six, six, and as a defensive tackle. One thing, as I mentioned earlier, keeping the offensive lineman off you, using your hands. Cornell does a great job of using his hands. They're checking him out on the side now. Trev, is there any hesitation from the guys you talked to? Both of them, Trev and Mark. Uh, any hesitation among these guys? Any fear of injury? No, the guys I talked to, you know, I put it flat out. Why are you here? And they said, I'm a competitor. I want to compete. And I've heard about all these different players. I've heard about Chris Leak. And I want to see if I can compete with them. Chris Leak on a third and 16. Throws a beautiful ball that is right in the hands. Andre Caldwell, who caught a touchdown pass on the opening drive of the game. Couldn't haul that one in. Might not have scored, but he would have had a huge game mark. And for Chris Leak, this is the touch we talk My about goodness. that a quarterback has to have. And we talk about those intangibles that a quarterback has, but this was absolutely perfect by Chris Leak. I thought the best thing about Chris Leak when he decided on where he was going to declare to go to college, what a recruiting tool. I mean, this is, this is so cool for a young man saying, come with me. I'm going to lead you to a national championship and follow me. Now, you think every offensive lineman or every wide receiver running back, they're not out there across the country with this team? And that's a mature young man. That is a smart, smart move. He's probably going to go talk to Andre Call and say, come on, man, I need you to follow your brother. We've got a roughing the kicker call for sure on Xavier Lawson's Kennedy as he goes in there and just clouds into the corner. Reggie Bush trying that lateral play. You know, I think Reggie Bush has been tuned into ESPN Classic. He, he must watch the Stanford Cal game from 82, 15 times. He said, right before the end of the half, he tried it. Lawson Kennedy. We're going to go down and get the call. I've, I've, I've got to feel like this is going to be rough. First foul. Xavier was lobbying for running into the kicker call, which would have only been five, but he's not even really close to getting that. Well, Reese, that's a pretty good athlete right there trying to block it, but first of all, you got a six foot three, 300 pounder in there on the punt block team. Once he goes airborne, he's not stopping. Hey, that's, that's good effort. I mean, you obviously don't want to hit the punter, but if you're a coach, you're saying, nice effort, but you're typically your nose guard doesn't know the proper angles in terms of blocking punts. And you know what? I told you guys Eric Wilbur was going to need that neck roll. <laughs> After the roughing the kicker penalty, there's Eric, still got the neck roll on. I like it. Spread formation, three receivers to the left with Chris Link. Whistle, flag on the play, stop. And we've hit a little stride here, guys, where it's gotten just a tad sloppy. These guys have been off from playing out of a rhythm, and of yep. course, the inherent problems you have when you try to mold together a new team. I'm Without telling you guys. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Replay. First down. I'm telling you, I'm watching Glenn Hill, the head coach of the West, and his right, defense. Right, right. And he's got Quentin Daniels in the middle of the field. He's got man to man with the safety help. He's going to find a way to get his team back in it. Cowboy 428 is a dump out there to Olsen. Olsen making the grab and the better tight end prospects in the country, making his first catch of the night, picking up 10 yards on the play, got him in position to try to pick up that first down after losing five on the illegal procedure penalty. Greg Olsen, we mentioned his brother, plays quarterback at Notre Dame. Tom Lemming, who's been inspirational and really a ton of help to us in preparing for this game, lists him as the top tight end prospect. 
And, and I talked to Reggie Lawrence, their head coach, and what he said about Greg Olson is, here's one of the players that you look at, Mark, that, that he blocks like an offensive tackle, but he runs routes like a wide receiver. You just don't have that combination out of a high school player. Here's Demetrius Summers out of Lexington, South Carolina. Just a little swing pass from Leak. Picks up good yardage, getting inside the West. 20, 17 more on the play. Let me ask you guys, watching Chris Leak, have you found anything that you would say, okay, here's a weakness. Here's something he can work on. Uh, that's going to be greeted by silence, I think. Mark, what do you think? No, I'll tell you what. The only thing he can work on is something that he can't do anything about and he can't coach, and that's his height. If there's only one question, one knock, people say, well, he's not that tall. He's six foot. He's listed at 6'2". He's six one, but he'll probably get a little taller. But the thing is, when you've got athletic quarterbacks today in the college level, the NFL level, you want a guy with a cannon for him. Pause, one but fifteen. He's got feet to run Pause, out Pause, one fifteen. Right. Is that little option play again? And Dabs went right at Lee, knocked him down, even though he pitched the ball. I'm telling you, Ed Zonbrecker called over to the coach and said, hey, you know that little option play I got there at Florida? <laughs> I want to see if old Chris can run that. Daryl Blackman took the pitch. That deep into West territory. See here, simply as a quarterback, all you're trying to do is get the defensive end to commit and then pitch it out and let your running back, Daryl Blackman, do the rest. But you Dabs was committed, for sure. You mentioned the height, Mark. And have you, we haven't seen the ball being knocked down, though, from Chris Lee. We've no, because he, he moves his feet. He doesn't stay right. stationary in the pocket, and he's right. smart enough with his vision when he looks downfield. He's not going to throw right. it right over an offensive lineman. He puts a little touch and some air in the ball. And he's sitting in the shotgun, which doesn't hurt. And, Mark, you look for lanes, too, don't you? And that is a well-thrown ball, a little short fade look to Jason Swain out of Grissom High School in Huntsville. Swain beating Caden. Chris Lee with his third touchdown pass of the night. And he puts the ball exactly where his receiver can see it and catch it when the defender is turned. That's what you want to see as a mature quarterback. We're seeing this out of a high school senior. You know, I don't, I was going to guard as we came into this game against, you know, it's raving sorry, about yeah, and yeah. overly excited. But I tell you what, it is tough to watch this kid play and not just salivate at the prospect of seeing what he can do in college. He has been absolutely spectacular. I don't think I've seen a ball wobble all night. No. See, Swain's got man coverage out here. Look at that. Perfectly thrown ball. There's no other way to describe it. He's light years ahead of any quarterback that's on the field to play, in my opinion. And the way that he can take command of an offense that he's only been in for a week. You know, it looks like he's been in this offense his entire career. And he just sits in the pocket, turns and throws the football. It's right on the money. There are some SEC defensive coordinators who are going to lose a lot of sleep over the next few years in trying to deal with Chris Lee. And I know Florida has some talented quarterbacks on the roster with Rex Grossman's decision to depart from the NFL. Ingle Martin, who got a little bit of time this year, was a highly regarded quarterback coming out of Nashville last year. But this kid you know, is like going to play quickly, you have to believe. I'd like to know from Chris Lee if Rex Grossman had not left and decided to stay at Florida, if that would have impacted his decision. Because so many of these young guys that I talked to had said, look, I want to find a place where they win and where I can contribute right away. You see Maurice Claret, you see Larry Fitzgerald, Mike Williams, all these young guys making huge impacts. Guys don't want to hang around red shirt, play on the freshman team. No, they want to play right away. Well, you know, Rob Stone addressed that with him, and he said he would have liked to have had Rex around as a mentor for a year. But I'm sure it's not. I, I think your point's well taken, Trevor. I don't think it's going to break his heart that he'll probably no. at least have an opportunity to play some in his, in his first year. And if Grossman been there, you know, I don't know if you put the red shirt on him anyway. So perhaps you, you get him ready for the future. He's led a seven-play, 49-yard drive. He play obviously, in roughing the punter. Jason Swain cashing in with the touchdown. He's a highly regarded receiver from North Alabama, a state that is blessed with some great wide receivers this year. Where's he going to college, Reese? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. There have been a couple of commitments. He uh, committed once to Alabama, once to Tennessee. I'm not sure that Jason has fully decided. He's had a, <laughs> he's these guys haven't. Yeah, they have a right to change their minds. Mike Price, get on the phone. <laughs> Say, I got this offense. You've seen it at Washington State. We like to have three and four wide receivers. We got this guy named Brody Croyle. He can wing it a little bit, huh? As, as Coach Price told us when he took the job, well, we're going to pitch that pill, Trev. I believe it was the quote that he used, wasn't it? Yes, it was. What he did at Washington State. Rose Bowl trip to Mike Price, and now starting on a new adventure and a new challenge. Now, 
West puts the ball to West, has a big challenge in front of them, and Kyle Wright, who's headed to Miami, has had a lot of company from the East defensive line throughout the night. Picked up about three on the scramble. Madison, Cotton, there once again, making life miserable for the West quarterback. Our U.S. Army storyline, Chris Lee, 7 out of 12, 164 yards. I think that would be a very good efficiency rating. Three yes. touchdowns so far. Reggie Bush from the West announced his decision to go to Southern California. He's rushed for 48 yards so far, but the West has gotten nothing, nothing done through the air. Three out of 16. They've completed more to East defenders than they have to their own receivers. Kyle Wright, Johnny DeRocher, Drew Tate, all with really rough outings thus far. But there will be better days for these guys. DeRocher in their quarterback, and it seems as if everybody had the snap count except the center. And the, and the West might be getting a little bit frustrated right now. Well, I think they are, and if you look at you don't have a lot of continuity when you continue to move the quarterback. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay, second down. And it's so difficult for the offensive line because the quarterbacks have different voice inflections when they go up to the line of scrimmage and call a play. And, and players on the line of scrimmage sometimes, they don't hear as well certain quarterbacks the way that they speak at the line. So you're going to see a lot of that when you rotate those quarterbacks from play to play. You know, I talked to the coaches this week. They told me in all-star games, up front decides it every time. And right now, the East on both sides of the ball up front are just dominating the line of scrimmage. Very simple. Second and 11, DeRocher in there now, and they're going to try to do it on the ground with Bush. It's been the most effective play tonight for them, and Reggie Bush showing some moxie. Sean Crable making the tackle. A little help from Corey McEwen. Fourth tackle of the night for Crable. Bush picked up seven yards before he was dragged down to the turf. So Bush reminds me a lot about a player I played with a long time ago, Joe Washington, because he's got that hip rotation. When he runs the ball in the open field, he's got enough speed to take it straight ahead, but he still has that hip rotation where he can make defenders miss. You don't see that a lot today. A lot of your backs want to just run straight line, get out of bounds, or turn it upfield and go. He wants to make people miss in the open field. I always thought that you had good hip rotation. 97. Gee, that's, thanks, about all, that's about all I want to hear on that. I'm glad Kyle Ryan has a mic on. That way I don't have to hear any more about hip rotation. <laughs> right? Pass, a rare completion for the West. Whitney Lewis out there. Six-yard pickup, first down. West trying to get a little offense going. No, they need to. You asked me to keep an eye on Jory Adams, the left tackle. And he's so tall at 6'7". He's probably going to get bigger, but the key is he's not a waist bender being so tall. He bends the knees, and that's what you'll love to see about a tall offensive lineman. He gets down low, and he's got those long arms. Look how long his arms are. Huge. At the left side here, here he is. Look at him. He gets a little turn there, gets his hand on the defender, and pushes him down. There's even another defender on his knees, but he keeps his feet. He's got great feet, good hands. It's going to be a great play. West on the ground again. There's Bush picking up yardage. And guess who's in on the tackle, fellas? Picked up five. We've been talking about Eric Wilbur, who's on this team as a punter. Eric's in there. He and his neck roll in there. He's making a tackle for the second straight play. He's a tough guy. If you ever see a punter with a neck roll on, you do have to do a double take at the guy because you don't see it that often. You well, know where you know, he's going? He's going to school at Florida. And Reggie Bush, you want to know what a good running back can do. You have to make the first guy miss. Right here, boom, make Sean Crable miss. Make the first guy miss. All high school players, to get to the next level, have to make the first guy miss. Sixth missed tackle of the night for the East defense. Done a pretty good job in that regard. He played for a while. Right now going up top, wanting it all and wanting it quickly. And into a crowd, bouncing around. Brett Smith couldn't come down with it. Covered very, very well there once again by Ryan Monday, who's picked off a couple of passes tonight. You know, Trev, this is just a simple slam. It's a deep slam. But what's impressed me about this East squad, the athletes that they've got in the secondary, everyone they put out there, they covered the ball. Tremendous job by all of them. They covered the football. Zibikowski's on the coverage Monday came over late, and Zibikowski's showing good feet and great speed. And I think boxing has a lot to do with it. He's got that hand-eye coordination, and he's boxed since he was nine years old. And you, you know, it's great for a defensive back because you're running down the field to play. You have to turn and adjust to the football and knock it down. I think boxing's up to now in his quarterback on third down play, and he's going up top. That ball's under thrown and right through the hands of Whitney Lewis. Lewis had an opportunity to make a big play there. Couldn't quite haul it in. It's going to bring up a punting situation again for the West, which has been an adventure tonight. Talked to Tom Zibikowski's dad, Ed, and obviously his dad, Ed, had 
his mother are very involved in which decision that he'll make but it seems to me it's pretty clear it's, it's Notre Dame it's Nebraska or it's Iowa and uh, he, you know I mean there's a lot of talk with these kids in high school so do you choose the position that best helps you get to the next level Tom says I'm not thinking about the NFL I'm thinking about where I can play and where I can play right now and over 2,600 yards of offense the quarterback almost evenly distributed between rushing yards and passing he's a phenomenal athlete great speed Speaking of speed, Demetrius Summers has some. He's back to receive the punt for the East, and Demetrius Summers has not been greeted anybody yet. A tremendous block on the outside by, I believe that was Joe Cohen coming up with a great block for Demetrius Summers. The East in business again, and up big. Good people of Texas have made us feel right at home. The U.S. Army dragster. Now that's my car. Clark wants a Hummer. He wants to drive around that Humvee. That's what I want to drive around. I asked to drive that. They wouldn't let me drive that either. I've asked to drive just about every vehicle here. They won't let me close to anything. You know, I've driven a dragster before, and let me tell you, it is frightening. It is frightening. Inside five minutes to go in the third quarter, it's fun. It's a little scary. 26 to 3, the East on top. Brady Quinn now in a quarterback for the East. Hit headed to Notre Dame out of Dublin, Ohio, keeping the ball. The inside handoff book, and then Brady kept it, picked up about three, brings up a second and seven. You know what's really impressed me about a lot of these young men, Trev? When we talk to them, it's always yes, sir, no, yeah. sir, the respect. They're all humble. They're all tremendous athletes. They're all smart athletes. They're, they're all, athletes. Yeah, they're all involved in community affairs in their hometowns and charities and things like that. And that's what I was really impressed with. When you talk to these young guys, you could tell that these guys, they're going to be great leaders down the road, either it's football or whatever they decide to go on to after football with their academics. And not all these kids are going to turn out to be great big-time college players, but all of them are going to be very productive members of society. Like you said, great, great point averages, good keeping. Quinn again, keeping the ball, picking up about four on the outside. Paul well on the tackle again. Get out of Scottsdale, making a great impression, as did several underclassmen who came to San Antonio for the U.S. Army Combine, showing off their skills and hoping to catch the eyes of some coaches and a few recruiters from across the country. And that's Chris Leak. Kyle Wright winning this competition, certainly an honor. We have a kid playing in this game who was involved in that last year, Tom Zivikowski, who's been very impressive so far. Third down and three, Quinn trying to lead these to tack on some more. They're up big, Quinn firing it out to the left side, and Tim Castile has the catch. He has the first down, he's out of bounds. Rob Stone is standing by with the combine victor, Rob. Yeah, that was a two-day NFL-esque combine run by Don Beebe. You can get a maximum 400 points. This guy, Terrell Lambert from Oxnard, California, got 390. You know, folks in Columbus say, Trev Alberts can't even count to 39. <laughs> 390. Sorry, Trev. I know you can jack my jaw later, but hey, uh, strong safety from California. Tell me about some of the schools that you're interested in right now. Oh, uh, I can't really comment on that right now. Only way I could is if I had offers, but a couple of Pac-10 schools come to mind. I like Oregon. I like Washington State. Um, a couple of Big Ten schools. I like Ohio State, Michigan, um, Penn State. Schools like that. Quinn on the carry. Brady Quinn. Sorry, Rob, go ahead, bud. How intense is the recruiting process right now? You're only a junior in high school. Or, or, is the mailman starting to get a little uh, ticked off at your household? It comes up every now and then. I mean, I'll probably get a letter, a letter every um, week or so. But right now, it's pretty calm. It hasn't really got haywire like most people. All right, see, Reese, we're doing our research for next year's <laughs> game, right? That's right. He'll have an and I can count. And you know what? Those letters are going to start coming in higher than anybody can count after winning that combine, too. Absolutely. Darrell Lambert with an impressive performance. Trev, we know you can count, but you just can't count past 25. Well, you got a point there, Mark. Brady Quinn going to stay in that pocket and throw the ball. I'm sure Ty Willingham's happy about that after the hits he's taken and almost had himself a touchdown pass. There he is again. Leonard round three wow. again. He's all over the place. I am very impressed with Leonard Roundtree. I mean, just his, just his ability to get to the ball and knock it down. He's not big as we talked about before, but close watch, yeah, watch him adjust to the football, Trevor. Look at this. Closing speed. Right there. Gets the hand up. You know what he knocked away? Leaping ability. 
that was a sure touchdown, but a great individual effort by Leonard Brown. Too. You know, Chris Lee might have already sewn up the Pete Dawkins trophy, but if that pass had been completed, you could have made a pretty good case for Louis Irizarry. He was the receiver on that play. He's already blocked the punt, caused the safety, almost had himself a touchdown, if not for the fine play by Roundtree. Quinn down to third and 11, getting deep in the third quarter. Play clock winding down. Brady gets it off, gets some heat, took one right in the teeth and throws a beautifully thrown touchdown pass to Sean Bailey. And the East is in the end zone again. Wow. That is, it's a timing pattern down the sidelines, but you don't see strikes like this. Full speed, full go by Sean Bailey. Brady Quinn standing tall in the pocket. And you don't see passes like this in a high school all-star game like this. This is a big time pass. You got speed on the outside, a 4-4-40 man and Bailey. And you know, I played against his dad, Stacy Bailey, used to play wide receiver for the Falcons, but watch this in the pocket. I mean, this is tremendous command of just sitting up. Look at this pass. It's perfect. Full speed, on the money. You, you can't defend that, Trev. That's, that's, you can't defend the pass well, like that. That's why this game is set up that way. A lot of man-to-man. -man. You want to see individual players compete. You don't want to have them make mistakes, mental mistakes. You want to just let these guys play and let their natural abilities. You know, it can obviously, Sean Bailey has an awful lot of speed. He's out of Georgia, considering Georgia, Florida State, and Virginia. Uh, I'm told that he is, he is verbally committed to Georgia, and uh, Mark Rick was happy about that. As we know, those things are tenuous, but he certainly would fit in well with David Green and company. The kid out of Alpharetta getting the touchdown. The East is up huge. Just 18 touchdowns this year. Six 175-pound speedster out of Alpharetta, Georgia. That's a suburb of Atlanta. He put the East up by a count of 32 to 3. Garrett Rivas will try to tack on the extra point. And the kid on his way to Michigan, he's nailed a 31-yard field goal tonight, puts it through the uprights, and it is a 30-point lead for the East. Quinn to Bailey, the 30-yard touchdown, capping off a six-play, 41-yard drive. It took three minutes and nine seconds off the clock. And another example of a quarterback running this offense to precision. We saw Chris Leak and Brady Quinn did very well. Did very well. And how about if you're David Green in Georgia right now, just another weapon in that offense. You know, depending on if Musa Smith comes back, what a great year that Mark Rick and Georgia had. But Fred Gibson, Michael Johnson, just another guy with an awful lot of speed. When Georgia gets in those three wide receiver sets, that's why they win, because you don't have enough good corners, enough safeties. You can't cover these guys man-to-man. -man. Too many weapons offensively, and that's why Georgia is so good on offense. Mark, it's the reason this game is so lopsided. I know we've seen outstanding performances by the people on the edges, the so-called skill people. But do you see a big difference in the lines of scrimmage? It seems as if that the East defensive line has really handled the West offensive line. Well, they definitely have. You've got tremendous athletes up front. And we talked about Victor Amamari. He's been all over the field for the East and Tez Doolittle and company. And you look at some of the athletes that they have, and, and they're bigger than basically the offensive line for the West. You look at some of these defenders, you've got some 300-pound defensive linemen that are high school kids that are able to get to the quarterback, and you don't find many of those players across the country. They're very few and far between if they're good athletes. Rivas' kick is not quite going to reach the end zone. Mason's going to take it with about a six, and he's looking for a seam over the 25, and he gets Mason sold under the there. Off return. Dante Whitner first down to greet him, and he got plenty of help along the way, a return of 21 yards for the speedster from the West. And you'll see some more talent on display. Rather than headed to college, these guys headed to the NFL, the East-West Shrine game, Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Ty Willingham against Mike Price, Brad Banks, Ken Dorsey, Carson Palmer, Jason Gesser, Seneca Wallace. There's some guys out there who can pitch that thing around a little bit, and a couple of them who can move their feet as well. You mentioned, uh, you know, the East dominating. I talked to some of those guys. You know those West Coast guys walking around here with their pretty tans. We want to go out there and hit them. I think they were a little offended that they were down, you know, two games and nothing in this series so far. Kyle Wright had a very difficult night. You know, Brian Madison again from the outside, bringing constant pressure, number 55. It's only 6'3", about 240 pounds, but speed. That's what you have to start with as a defensive end, speed around these big offensive tackles. Brian Madison 
has had a fabulous game so far. Check out the elbow. He's got some blood on his elbow. You, you like to see that. He's a tough, doesn't even worry about it. He's got it scraped up on the AstroTurf. He's still out there bringing I'm the telling heat. you, he's probably convinced his dad that he made a terrible, he, he, I should have recruited my son, Mark. Yeah. Here he comes again, and Tate had to get rid of the football. He's looking for Ritual Massey out there. Ritual Massey is a kid that's headed to SMU. You take a good look at Madison there. Massey, 5'10", he's undersized by height, but he is not undersized in strength. He's a champion power lifter, squats about 700 pounds, wow. 450 on the bench. This is what Phil Bennett, the head coach of SMU, needs. He needs difference makers. I mean, they have some good football players at SMU. Didn't have the type of year that Phil wanted. Phil's a defensive mind. Finally, guys like Massey, guys who can make a difference offensively. Yeah, but here's a player that was recruited by just about everybody in yes. Texas. He had an opportunity to go to Texas. He said, well, they have too many running backs there. I want a chance to play as a freshman, so I'm going to go to SMU. Here's Wyatt again, this time getting a little protection. He's showing off that gun, and it's just a little bit too long for Steve Smith out there. Ambrose Wood on the coverage for the... So on the fly, he threw that ball about 60 yards. Well, Mark, we talked about that. That's strong. Let's see here. <laughs> 10, 12. Yep, uh, yep. Where the quarterback threw it from, not the line of scrimmage, oh, oh. Trip. That's why you've got that Nebraska math of yours. Well, Perry is right there. Uh, Look where he's standing. Let's see where he's he on the 20-yard line. He's on what? The 22-yard line. Okay, 20 plus. Okay, to that 30. And the ball comes back down around the 22-yard line. So let me see. 28, 28 is 56. That's about 60 yards. Close Can enough. You, are, are you oh, catching up well, here? Well, that's that Pittsburgh math. Yeah, Close there you enough. Go. Get to round up a little bit. I think some of these guys had rounded up on their height. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure they're all what they say they are. The quarterbacks have for sure. West getting a punt out of there. This is Summers on the return for the East. He's had several good returns tonight, and Demetrius takes it into West territory where the East has lived throughout the evening. Inside the 45, I think they're going to mark it down. The line's been on about the 43. Thomas Williams making the tackle. He's had three of those tonight. 35-yard punt, 17-yard return. Cody needs to get a little more hang time there. He's yeah. uh, giving him a running start. You know, when we talked to a lot of these players, they said, well, I'm verbally committed here and there. And, and Trev, your opinion, who do you think what college is, is, is done the best? I think there's probably three of them that really stick out to me. Well, I mean, if you just go by this game, a lot of teams don't, you know, they have their own type of player. They're filling needs. But I think Michigan's done very well. Oklahoma has six or seven verbal commitments. And as we have to remember, verbal commitments are non-binding, you know, commitments. They have not signed on the dotted line. These are verbal commitments, and we know that some of those do change before the signing date in February. But right now, I would say Michigan and Oklahoma done very well. I agree with you on those two, but I'd also say Notre Dame. Notre Dame has done yes. very well. A lot of kids in this game. Here's Clayton Richard, who is a Michigan commitment. End of the game, pitching it out to Travis Thomas. And we touched on this a little bit earlier, and it sort of goes to what you were speaking of, Trev. Some programs recruit a type of player. Michigan clearly recruits a type of quarterback. And then you see the other guys with the varied skill sets that they have around. But they like the big, strong, stand in the pocket quarterback. And Clayton Richard is that for them. And they've always had that type of offense under Lloyd Carr, a guy that can take a hit. But, you know, you look at John DeBar, he's the same type, the same mold. He's 6'5", 245 pounds. You want a guy that can stand in the pocket, stand tall, get the ball down the field to your receivers, and that's what Michigan recruits. And you see all those guys in the NFL. I mean, you know, they're going to go to the next level. Wow. Richard throws it out to Jason Swain, and Jason Swain is into the... Let's see. Are they going to mark him down? They were waving their arms over their head. I thought they were signaling touchdown. There is a flag on the play. We'll go back and see. We had some contact between Swain and the defensive back. Glenn Roundtree as he went down the right side. Let's get the call. Holding on the defense. Touchdown. So Jason Swain making his arrival. Notice his second touchdown of the night, and now all three East quarterbacks have thrown touchdown passes 42 yards here in Swain, showing why he's so highly touted. Well, this is simply six foot two, 205 pounds. It's simply who wants it more. He uses his athletic ability, also his strength, just comes down. You got to compete for the football as a wide receiver. Obviously, Jason Swain competed for the football. And he finished that playoff. You look at the hand strength of Jason Swain taking that ball away from Leonard Roundtree and then finishing the playoff by getting into the end zone. Rebound's going to try to make it an even 40. 
Did I mention to you guys that uh, Jason Swain played his high school football in North Alabama? Uh, yes, you did. Is that close to a place called uh, Muscle Shoals? It's not too far away. You can play in North Alabama. You can play anywhere, boys. <laughs> Jason Swain can play anywhere. And the East is laying on the West. They thought last year was a blowout at 26-6. The East has answered that whipping with a 40-3 margin. We are not yet through the third quarter. Big congratulations on the sidelines. Jason Swain, and don't forget, coming up later tonight on ESPN2, College Hoops Tonight, 10.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 out on the West Coast. As mentioned before, I had a big matchup in the SEC today. Georgia and LSU, conference season underway. Getting ready for a little hoop on the family of networks. Of course, we'll have coverage of games conferences all across the land. It'll culminate with championship week for the men. We have the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament from tip to finish. The final four in Atlanta this year. We'll have it all for you on ESPN. We'll have every game. And for some of us, we just look forward to spring football. As it is, football's everything, Reese. There's one sport. You need spring football and then real football. When the real football gets done, we, we wait for spring football. Well, we are in the state of Texas, and they say that's the way it is in Texas and many other places. Ohio, perhaps, although it's a great basketball state as well. Kickoff, driving Bush into the end zone. Reggie Bush coming out of there, and once again, excellent kick coverage by the East. East stopping at the 20-yard line, and the kid who's headed to pit. Afa Anoa'a saying, no way. <laughs> Mark knew that was coming. We've worked together for a while. He's up 40 to three. Third quarter's over. We're headed to the final period. All from inside, you push a button. The weapon to charge. Two of them malfunction for you. And then on you go. And a little explanation here. The U.S. Army All-American ball. The East up 43 on just how to drive one of those big tanks. Some of the technical equipment that the Army is using now. You know, I asked them about pushing those buttons, and they just said, don't touch it. They just don't trust me. You are a gadget guy. Yeah, well, I want to, I want to, to push play buttons. around and have some fun. Ernest Mason with the catch. Six foot, 180. Head to Wisconsin. Speedster. 10-300. Barry Alvarez gets another Lee Evans type speech from the outside. I think I can get some of those night vision goggles, Reese. <laughs> what do you need then? Well, you, you, try, you, you wound up with some hats. Maybe you can yeah. get some of the goggles. Hey. He's such a mooch. He's maybe, always asking for something. It's maybe the NFL policy. If it's free, I'll take two. Maybe. <laughs> That's maybe what he did with his paycheck, too. Maybe you can sign your tie, as seen on ESPN2. Here's Johnny DeRocher, and Johnny DeRocher has been greeted rudely by, guess who? The Hawkeye, Ryan Madison, he coming up with his fourth sack of the night. He is I, I, I'm telling you now, we need to split up the Pete Dawkins MVP trophy. I, Chris Leak deserves half, but I'm telling you that Brian Madison deserves half as well. I mean, a dominating defensive performance by Brian Madison. They can't block him. Doesn't matter where he lines up. He finds a way to get to the quarterback. He uses his speed, his leverage. You know, this is a guy, he's, he's, he's going he's gonna to be a star. You know, and his dad, obviously coaching at Notre Dame, maybe didn't get to see all of his high school football games. You know, but you know the deal is, his dad's going to be right there on the sideline saying, now, son, that was a verbal commitment to <laughs> Iowa. I know Brian would love to have four sacks. I misspoke as his fourth tackle. First sack had numerous quarterback pressures. There There's another one. <laughs> he may have four sacks before it's over. Drew Tate firing it deep down the field and almost had the completion. Busted up and a good defensive play by Burgess again. Well, what's happening More is in Ohio, Whitney Lewis receiver. The West needs to make an adjustment. They're trying to block Brian Madison with tight ends. You're not going to block a good defensive end with a tight end. It just isn't going to happen. You need to either double him or let the tackle kick out and try to block the defensive end. And, Trev, look at this defender. Zibikowski, Wooden, Mundy, Burgess, Whitner. I'll tell you what. Take all of them. They could start. All these five can start, in my opinion. Well, Prescott in the Burgess first year? right there. Yes, they can all start as freshmen. 6'3", 215 pounds and runs up 4'5". It's a matter of learning the defense, though. I mean, physically, the physicality is there. Now it's mental and getting to the next level there. Is that the biggest adjustment? You guys both had to make that jump. Is that the biggest adjustment that one has to make? I'll do a John Madden here. Yeah, I've always said that high school football is 90% physical. 
10% mental. You get to college, it's 50-50. That's the difference for these guys. Demetrius Summers with a 19-yard punt return in Drew Tate. West offense had a rough go of it. West down 43. You know, I think the East has been driving one of those big tanks, and they steamrolled right over the West so far. 9-16 to go in the game in the East. Just never won this game, U.S. Army All-American Bowl, but they're about to now. It's 40 to three. East on top. Clayton Richard now in a quarterback for the East team. Trying to bounce it to the outside. Demetrius Summers, not much there. Picked up one. Rob Stone standing by with a couple of special guests. Yeah, a couple guys who have won their share of battles as well. Retired General Hal Moore, General Dennis Cavan. And uh, tell me why, for the second year in a row, you guys have decided to be associated with this high school American Bowl game. Well, I think it represents in a very dramatic way our commitment to the youth of America. After all, what we're seeing on this field is youngsters who've stood up in their communities, leadership, teamwork. They've demonstrated that. Academically, they're outstanding. And those are the qualities that we're looking for in our young soldiers. And each one of them represent exactly that. Second down and 10. Richard. Got Bailey inside the 30. Bailey slips the tackle, picks up the first down inside the 25. Rob? Uh, one more question for you, General Cavan. Uh, tell me about how many more recruits you've gotten through your affiliation with this. And, and obviously, these are the kind of kids and people that you want protecting your country. Well, obviously, the goal is not to come out here and try to recruit at a football game. But it's the passing of information, making aware the door opening opportunities that empower the individual to succeed in all walks of life. And that's what we hope to get out of it. Actually, last year, we had 40 individuals who signed contracts as a result of gaining information right here at this football game. First and ten after the completion from Richard to Bailey. Here's Clayton Richard, kid out of Indiana, headed to Michigan, has his pass batted down. It'll be second and ten. Chris Dabbs coming up with the deflection there. Well, General Moore, how, how does this football game relate to the team concept that the Army is, is trying to spread? My wife and I have been here for three days. We've talked with and watched these cheerleader athletes, the football athletes, and the skilled musicians. And they are superb youngsters. And I'll tell you what, the future of our country is in good hands. These people have teamwork, self-discipline. They have a great work ethic. I've really been amazed at the work ethic I've seen and the will to win. And that's what we've got to have in this country from now on. These kids are the future of America. Tomorrow belongs to them. And we're in good hands. Hallelujah. Generals, thank you for your time. Thank you for all you have done and the people under you continue to do to defend the world's greatest country. Thank you, guys. Very well said, General. Rob? Ladies and gentlemen, at the future of college football in hand on the Alamo Dome. U.S. Army All-American Bowl being dominated by the East. Demetrius Summers running the ball in the previous play, setting up a third down and short for the East. About three, they're going to call it inside the 20 as the East continues to run that spread attack. If the West has had very little success stopping in the air. Pass out there to Jason Swain. Can't pull in. Jason with a couple of touchdowns tonight. And Jason, we talked about maybe a couple of verbal commitments he's made at, at various times. What's the best recruiting story uh, you guys had? And I want to let both of you know that the statute of limitations in regard to the NCAA yeah, has so now passed. So you can, you can give up your best recruiting story. Trev, first of all, I was recruited the right way. Uh, Are I you implying well, that no, someone I wasn't? Didn't, I didn't mean that, but coming okay. out of Iowa... I had Dan McCarney was at the University of Iowa, recruited me, was a fantastic recruiter, grew up in Iowa, wanted to go to Iowa. The most difficult thing I had to do was tell Dan McCarney and Hayden Fry, I'm not coming to Iowa. I'm going to go play for Tom Osborne at Nebraska. Mark, you were with, uh, at Pittsburgh, obviously, in the heyday, and there were a lot of great athletes coming into Pittsburgh at that time. Yeah, What's the best one you got? What about some other, some other places you went? Prior to start, no, action. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay. Hugh Jackson. Uh, Hugh Green, Hugh Green, Hugh Green Ricky, Ricky Jackson, Jackson and uh, Tony Dorsett was really our host, and he told us, guys, I don't take recruits around. You guys are coming to Pitt. So we came to Pitt. The guy just won the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. But I took another trip down to SMU, and I landed at SMU, and Ron Myers, the head coach. Oh, yeah. You got to like that trip. And yeah. he pulls up <laughs> in a red convertible Cadillac with the bullhorns on the hood. And he's the head coach, and his hair is waving in the wind. He goes, you got to come down and play at SMU. This is the greatest place in the world. And I said, mm, I came back and told my father that. He said, you're not going there yet, man.
Daryl Blackman getting to the outside, and Daryl Blackman almost making it into the end zone, pushed out of bounds just inside the two, about the one and a half. Blackman ripping off 20. He's a 6 190 pounder out of Williamsport, headed to North Carolina State. And all those stories, to... like at SMU in those days, that you know guys were driving Firebirds and stuff like that. I don't know, Trev. I was well. You know... Is it safe to say the NCAA was less intrusive in those days, <laughs> Mark, when um, you were recruited? Well, I can say this: that uh, <laughs> you know, when you took a trip, you were supposed to fill out forms. You were supposed to take six trips when I was in high school, and I can't remember, did I take eight or ten or twelve? <laughs> but I never filled out one of those forms, one of those release forms. I could have taken another six. I'm going to give I'm going to give you up, sort of. I'm not giving up the school. It was not the school you signed with, but but you got a you got a really nice jacket from somebody. <laughs> Don't say who. Didn't you get a really nice jacket? I got a couple of nice leather products on one of my trips years ago. <laughs> Here's Clayton Richard right up the middle. And Clayton Richard, he's throwing a touchdown pass tonight, is out run for one in the east. Piling it on now, 46 to 3 over the West. It is just domination by the East. I think that uh, it still goes back to practice. When, when you've got two teams that come in and they haven't played football in at least a month, some of them are longer, and then one team's got the pads on and they go out and they get knocked around a little bit, I think they're a little bit more prepared than a team that hasn't really put the pads on and hit for the week. These guys like Joe Thomas, Mike Jones, John Sullivan, Trip Carroll, Aaron Sears, the offensive line of the East has just dominated the West up front. 46 to 3, and now Rivas is going to make it 47 to 3. Rivas has scored a lot of points. Inside three minutes to go. I'm looking for a little shelter. The West might want to climb right in that Humvee and drive out of here. The finest high school senior football players from across the Fruited Plain putting their talents on display tonight. An entertaining offensive performance by the East. I'm sure the West has not been terribly entertained by it, but we've seen a lot of great talent on both sides of the ball. Chris Leak has stolen the show, yes. along with the other quarterbacks from the East, Brady Quinn, Clayton Back Richard. I don't, those, I don't think you can make, you can't make a fair assessment of the West quarterback. You just simply no. haven't had time to throw the football. I haven't time to set the team. Ernest Mason returning the kickoff for the West, and Ernest Mason just Mason about squirted through. And he's dragged down. After a 25-yard return, he's pulled down by Vernon Davis. East up big on the west, late. American Bowl, 47-3. to Brilliant display by the East offense, particularly Chris Leak, highly touted quarterback, Charlotte, North Carolina, who announced tonight on the telecast that he is headed to the University of Florida. Drew Tate in at quarterback, Cornell Johnson, 6'1", 205 pounder out of Las Vegas. Cornell really hasn't had a chance to carry the ball much tonight, getting a carry here late. You know, one of the things in talking to all these young men, I said, you know, how about the recruiting process? And all of them, without fail, told me, the guys that called me first, I have a special feeling for, and I'm still considering, don't call me now, you're just calling me because everybody else is calling me. Memo to recruiters, you've got to get to these kids early. Here, Reggie Lawrence on the field mic down there. Reggie got some ice and water dumped on his head. Pick up a four there by Johnson, who's getting a carry. Let's go down to Rob Stone now. Rob? Well, thanks, Reese. We're joined now by Pete Dawkins, the most valuable player trophy named after you. And for the presentation, Pete. Chris. Um, I'm very proud to present you this most valuable player. There's a bunch of valuable players out there. You had some great teammates and some great opponents out there. But it's exciting for the future of football that uh, you and your colleagues are doing the job you are. You're a terrific standout. And you got a great future. I understand it's going to be with Florida. And best of luck. And from all of us, all of us old antique football players and from the Army, who's proud to sponsor this. I'm proud to present this to you. Well deserved. Thrown out of bounds by number 29. Chris Lee. Well, Chris, Hawkins. almost an effortless effort today. Uh, what do you think Ron Zook is doing right now in his study watching this game? Yeah, I, I, I know he's, uh, I, I bet he's just relaxing, you know, just uh, getting ready for next year, so. Uh, of course he's relaxing. You just told him you're going to Gainesville. <laughs> no, it's, um, you know, it, it's a total team effort, you know. I, all I can think of is my line for blocking great. You know, the defense got the ball. Defense did a great job. And, uh, you know, the receivers, they made plays. Congratulations. Enjoy Gainesville. Thanks a lot. Rob, Chris, thank you very much. We're inside 30 seconds to go now. Clock here in the fourth quarter. Wind, wind down on the west. 
Couple more plays for Hatt. Get an opportunity to score a touchdown. Or maybe not. Wendell White going out of bounds. And if the West doesn't hurry up, that might do it. A dominant performance by the East All-Stars. And for the first time in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, the East reigns victorious 47-3. Highlighted by the performance of Chris Lee. 7 out of 12, 164 yards and 3 touchdowns, and he picks up Pete Dawkins' trophy, retired Brigadier General, former Army star, and 1958 Heisman Trophy winner. East, all over the West, 47 to 3. We're coming back to San Antonio right after these messages. Stay with us, everybody. 10-2's exclusive presentation of the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, presented by the United States Army, an army of one, and in part by Russell Athletic. Congratulations to Coach Bill Gallagher from Perry Traditional Academy, the Russell Athletic High School Coach of the Year. Russell Athletic, worn by America's top teams. And congratulations to the East, a 47-3 winner over the West. The East taking home the Herman Boone Trophy, which goes to the victor. Coach Reggie Lawrence leading the East to victory for the first time over the West. And there is Coach Boone, who is the inspiration for the Remember the Titans movement. Herman Boone, quite a character, and presenting the winning trophy. And Reggie got himself a little bath there from his East players. They came in, they put on the pads, they worked hard. And they got the victory in emphatic fashion, 47 to 3. It's been a great season. You know, last year's Pete Dawkins MVP, Vincent Young, playing Texas. Now you have Chris Lee. Fantastic next year. College football. Our 47 3 final gives the victory to the East. Coming up next, the world's strongest man for Mark May, Trev Alberts, and Rob Stone. I'm Reese Davis. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good night from San Antonio.